Hello everyone, uh, none other than your account right here, and I'm with uh, a bunch of oh, other shit. people. My bad. My bad. Fuck. <laughs> fuck, fuck. <laughs> Shut up, fuck. Ah! Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's our intro, everyone. <laughs> hey guys, um, <laughs> uh, so guys, I want to welcome you all to the one and only Doom Club size review for Eternal. Um, and I'm gonna. You know, I'm going to introduce myself, none other than the Count. Um, we then got uh, J.R. Crash, who is usually the one uh, doing this kind of intro. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? All right. Uh, then we got uh, the the Tin of Juice himself. Hello, hello friends. How are you all today? <laughs> uh, we got Shades Master, Lord of the Slayer's Testament. Yes, and I am in my room. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, we got a little bit of a newcomer, um, none other than Mr. Perfectus. Hello, everybody. I don't have much of an online presence. However, I am very passionate about Doom, so here I am. All right. Um, let's begin uh, ripping and tearing into this game in a good way. <laughs> Presumably. Oh, yeah. All right. So, um, I'm going to go over kind of this loose schedule that we've got going. We're going to begin with just our general thoughts. Nothing specific, just general. Um, which we will then go into the mechanics, which involve uh, you know, just the shooting, the glory killing, just playing the game. Uh, we'll then go into enemies. Um, after that, it's art design. So, that's going to be like the environments, the character designs, the music, sound design. We'll then go into the story and lore, followed by battle mode, another potential multiplayer. Then we're going to go into the secrets, Easter eggs, skins, that like all that bonus stuff. Then we're going to go to our final thoughts. All right. So let's uh, let's begin. How do we feel about Doom Eternal? I'm elated personally. I really like the game. I was I look forward to it for like two years and yeah i was not disappointed i only wish there was a way to make levels for it but hey there's mods out there for that if you know what i mean <laughs> all right um so for me like even though i've already played through the campaign twice now I throw myself into one of these levels, and I feel myself <laughs> slowly becoming a sort of psychopath as I rip and tear through these demons, because the adrenaline's just insane. I don't think it's a perfect game, but it's it's too much fun. <laughs> um, I think something that I'd like to point out is that for me to obsessively think about this game... Up until it's revealed, disappointment when I did finally get my hands on it is impressive enough because you know how things are. The more high your expectations are, the more you think about it, the more excited you get about it, the harder and well. Um, the fact that it wasn't a failure just by that degree is kind of telling of its quality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, so it sounds like you're not 100% in love with the game. <laughs> I guess I'm not the only one then. I feel good about that. I see. Because I might be the most. I, I was worried I might be the Mr. Buzzkill with my criticism. Don't because, worry. Uh, I didn't feel like it was the perfect game. Oh, don't worry. I've got I've got a couple buzz kills of my own, but we'll get to that. Um, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm just saying that it was that good. I right. definitely got some. I definitely got some buzz kills of my own, but honestly, most of it mostly goes towards battle mode than it does the actual game itself. All right. Um, all right. Am I? Am I? Are we missing anyone else? Uh, anyone else's word here? I guess uh, I can. I can put my thoughts you know, just really quickly. Yeah. Uh, I really, really love this game. Oh my god! I've beaten it probably eight or nine times so far i've completed ultra nightmare twice that was a bastard oh. and a half um but uh i can safely say that uh deep down as a sequel this is the perfect sequel like it does pretty much everything right um because 2016 ha fucking great game love that game it's one of my all-time favorites 
and Eternal really, really improves upon almost every single building block that game started with. Uh, and uh, I'm just very happy we actually got a sequel in, in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like, it definitely, it definitely took a game that was already awesome and then just, like, added gold trimming onto it, you know? Yeah. Um, so um, I think what I really like about Doom Eternal um, is that it's carrying on the tra tradition of every Doom game being different. Yeah, you know I mean? it's so much different than any other. Like, it's different than 2016, different than Doom Three, different obviously than the original Dooms. So, uh, even though it's, uh, you know, it, it's got its good and its bad. At least it's different enough that it, it's not just, it, it's its own experience. So, it, for the people who love it, it'll always be there for them to jump into and play. And for the people that don't love it, you know, it doesn't take anything away from any of the previous Dooms that are still out yep i agree um it's not just doom 2016 but with different levels it's doom eternal yeah it's doom yeah. eternal it's because like it, it has the familiarity of 2016 because like i i have to agree with that because like 2016 and doom eternal feel very different even though they play pretty much exactly the same and they feel exactly the same but doom eternal does like it just feels more fluid, and it feels like it's a lot more um, perfected. Like, they really understood exactly how to make the game, the, the sequel, like, way better, because, like, I didn't think they could do better than 2016. I genuinely thought 2016 was, like, the fucking perfect FPS game I've ever played. Like, the gameplay is literally that good, and they definitely surprised me. I, I was shook on how great and fantastic they were able to do better than 2016 honestly yeah oh yeah now i think we're gonna jump in our first section here because let me ask you guys what the fuck is a game without gameplay <laughs> no. um, yeah that'd be uh that'd be any game made by that guy who, who made a uh, detroit become human what the fuck is that guy's name Oh, uh, I don't remember. I'm trying to remember that game now. Come on, the Telltale games now. Oh, yeah, right. it's pretty much Telltale games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't mind that series. I think it kind of belongs kind of outside of common video games, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying Telltale mm. is bad. It's just not uh, what you'd usually think it's about. Not the, it's not yeah. really a game. It's more like it's a more choose-your-own-adventure. Yeah, it's more like a movie that has interactive stuff in it. Yeah. yeah no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not trashing on Telltale. No, because I, I like Telltale games too. Yeah. My that being said, that's what we're reviewing today. <laughs> the tech sure. games. Those are the worst. Tech war. Yeah. It's like right. first person shooters are bad. <laughs> well, I honest, when it comes to the gameplay, I wasn't expecting them to infuse so much parkour into the actual game itself. Oh yeah. That's definitely a new thing for Doom. Oh, and I think certainly unexpected. Were, yeah, it's one of those things where, like, if you if you really dig the the, the aerial combat mechanics and the, the the dashing around and the parkour puzzles, then great. But I know a lot of people out there they don't play first person shooters because they love parkour. So I think this is kind of a it, it might be splitting a lot of uh, the fans depending on how you fall on the edge of that issue. But to be fair, I do consider Doom not really a traditional uh, first person shooter. It's kind of its own little realm outside, I find. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd like but... to actually... Oh, you can finish oh, your no. thought. I, I, no, no, I, I was going to take this in a kind of a different direction here. Um, oh. I, I just kind of wanted to take it... Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> are you gonna Are you going to say something or not? I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so, I'd like to take things from the top and just take us all back to that first level when you are first introduced to Doom Eternal. You are wielding the shotgun. The pistol is no longer present. Now, I remember spamming the pistol in the first game because of the unlimited ammo, but that is gone. However, you do have this familiarity in which you know what you must do. The game expects you to have um, released these shackles given to you by the other games in the FPS genre. It knows that you want to go right at your enemies. And it lets you be able to play with these new mechanics that it gives you. It it assumes that you played Doom 2016. And that's what makes it a good sequel. 
and probably a little bit harder to get into for somebody who hasn't played it. Yeah. Yeah. I would say. And he sure. touched on a good point there, uh, Perfectus, is that there's no pistol. And that's one thing I definitely love about the game is that there's no shit weapons. It's Every actually, weapon is a good weapon. It's, I mean, obviously you're going to have your preference, right? You know, which ones you... I, I tend to like, like the super shotgun piece of grappling hook for me, personally. Oh, oh, oh yeah. 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 The meat hook is gold. There's no shit in weapons, basically. So I'm, I'm glad they did that. Funny enough, the pistol is actually a scrapped weapon um, in this game. This version of the pistol is going to have a burst rifle element to it. Yep. I would it's not have fun. minded that, but I mean, hey. Yeah. It... Okay, another thing, one thing I really want to point out that I absolutely love about the weapon, the weapons in these games, is not is that not every fucking thing is UAC this time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, look the the rocket launcher is a cultist weapon. Um, the uh, we would just mention it. The super shotgun and the ballista; those are both uh, sentinel or argento weapons. Yeah. Um, yep. And then I guess the, oh, and then we have uh, our special uh, big unmaker, um, and then the yes. rest is UAC. You know, they go all over the place. I forget about uh, the crucible, which is oh central. yeah. Um, actually, I've got some gripes about that one. Basically, a lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, okay, I, I do enjoy that. Um, so I actually, I think that having a sword is such a kick-ass idea. I. Personally, don't really like the way it's executed in this game, though. <laughs> executed. <on> um, <laughs> so, look, you got. It serves the same purpose that the um, that kind of the chainsaw did in the previous game. Besides ammo, um, you know, it's a quick it's a quick kill. But I think um, I just don't like the system of you have three hits and then you have to go and find this this really rare. Um, this really rare, uh, oh, ammo. ammo, ammo, yeah. yeah. Um, it's for three kills, and there's so many demons you have to fight, you know? Hey, you know, I, I understand that. I think what the... I would have, sorry. Can oh, you... I was just gonna say, can you use the crucible to no. kill the marauders? No. Well, no. actually, no. you have you to stun them first. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> hold on. It's, hold on. You have to stun them before you can use it. He has to be yeah. in like a staggered state, isn't he? Yeah. So and we'll get more to. <laughs> we'll get without it. Yeah. Okay, let's, not, let's not talk about Mister. Oh, we'll talk he about um. Yeah. We'll talk about the guy that helps us to see later. <laughs> we got a whole section for him, really. Um. I kid you not. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, I saw that one. Did we all see that? <laughs> Can we, we all see that see video? That. Yes. <laughs> Actually, um, ever. did you guys um, <laughs> did you guys see the newest? Uh, I think it's an SFM video, um, where the Slayer and the Marauder they're in the Fortress of Doom, and they're listening to music. Oh. It's the funniest yes. shit. Yeah, you saw that. Yeah, yeah. It's like they're like two. Uh, it's voiced over by like two uh, Scottish dudes, yeah. I think. Gosh, yeah. Yeah, it's like. The <laughs> yeah yeah exactly like the marauder is um the marauder is getting him to listen to like this what he thinks is gonna be like a sappy love song but then ends up being like an old rock kind of it's funny it really is I love seeing the marauder's eye expressions as he talks <laughs> okay okay so because he has his helmet off yeah so sorry going ahead so um back to the crucible. I do see where you're coming from now. Um, so I, I don't think it would have been balanced to have the Crucible as it is, just have a crap ton of more ammo and more uses. Oh, God, Well, no. I think... And, well, I have an idea of how yeah. you would have used it, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if, we, if they would have thought of something different, uh, rather than a quick get-off-me weapon, mm -hmm. um, to have just given you a lightsaber you could use whenever you want, rather than being concerned about preserving it and when you really need it. Because well, it's only my, aesthetically uh, pleasing. You want to experience it the most possible. Yeah. yeah. It's I, funny because think... Layer's Testaments, I won't interrupt, but I, it's funny because our mod that my brother and I made, we do have the Crucible in it, and it's implemented in like a different way. In Slayer's Testaments, guess what? You, Whenever you get a glory kill, you fill up basically soul ammo like a game called a medieval and once you get to a certain amount 
then you could choose to wield the crucible, and then that ammo just is a timer that drips down. See that? Like There's that still, sounds I mean, cool. Yeah. Hey, I am so jealous of PC players. It's ridiculous. Uh, don't be jealous of me. <laughs> There's a reason why I have screenshots and not video footage. <laughs> um, yeah. I think that's a good point, though. You make shape master is that. Uh... I think it would have been better if they would have given it a mechanic similar to the Berserk, where yeah. you, know, you, you see, like, you, you use it, and then you just have a certain amount of time to just kill as many people as you can in, like, 10, 10 seconds or something. Exactly. You know, then you can actually just go crazy with the Crucible, you know? Right. I think, Who doesn't uh, want to kill demons with lightsabers? <laughs> um, now, one thing, I, I'll, I'll say this. One thing I really enjoy doing is uh, putting on the uh, the unlimited ammo cheat, putting on the sentinel <laughs> skin, and running around at the crucible. <laughs> um, oh, now, man. I didn't play Doom oh. 3, but I heard, uh, like, the mechanics of the soul cube is that you have to, like, kill some demons, then you can go crazy yeah. with the soul cube yeah, or something? Yeah, you kill, you kill yeah. I think it's, like, five demons, and then the soul cube recharges, and then you, you whip it out, and you could send it to, like, any demon, and it comes back to you, giving you health, basically. Yeah, like, it's, like it should have been something like that. It should have been, like, an ability, you know? I don't I feel think, like... I think that's... I think I can see where... The, yeah, because, like, you know, because it's a... The, the point that I wanted to make is, like... I see all the arguments about the about the crucible, and I'll see. I run into the same thing where like I run into like no ammo, so I I never like use it um, and stuff. And I think it would have been really cool. But there, I have two things about that, and one of them is that like you know if they did have that ability to like use the crucible like after killing a bunch of enemies and stuff like that, then they would have to add a lot more demons to every single room. Uh, when you get the crucible, because there's, there's there's just uh, there's just not enough uh, if you have something like that. Because here's 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 why, is that this weapon can kill any enemy besides well the marauder without having to do it in a particular way in one hit. Sure. And when you have a weapon like that, and you're you know sending like the biggest baddies against you and stuff, and that's kind of how it works. Where like killing a like for instance killing five demons and you get it, it doesn't matter which demon you kill. Uh, I think that can kind of uh, unbalance the amount of enemies that have to be in there. So you, I would I would think if they were going to do it like that, then they would probably add more enemies. That's pretty much what, I, what yeah. I'm saying. But I think I'm at least saying, that's what I'd yeah. like. Yeah. Slayer's now that you mentioned, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, so I was oh, going to say quickly, man. sorry, because we do have a version that does solve that also in, in the Quake mod. Because that's Slayer's good, yeah. Guess what? The Tyrant. When you slice him three times, guess what? You have to manually hit him three times. And we and when he's in pieces, he can still shoot at you. So it kind of like helps with the balance with some of the bigger baddies. So when you slice the tyrant apart in three times, which you can do in our mod, you slice his legs off, he's just a torso and stuff like that. And he can still he's in stationary, he can still shoot you, so you gotta like maneuver around him and slice him again with the crucible, then he then that then the last shot will kill him. So it's like it's definitely possible to do all these things that way. They implement it differently because we literally the Quake mod based on Doom 16 Eternal that we have does that. So that's kind of funny, I think. Now, I know I'm backtracking on my own words here, saying that I, I wouldn't talk about the Marauder, but here I am. Yes. Um, so as we've mentioned before, the Crucible is fairly ineffective against the Marauder unless if you're going to glory kill him with it. Yeah. And I was just thinking to myself just right now, what if the Marauder made you have to use the Crucible? Now, he's using very crucible <laughs> weapons. That would be a very bad mechanic. Yeah, that would, be, that would be That would be very... <laughs> that would be, well, because, like... Well, because, I mean, it sounds cool in theory, you know? Because, like, personally, out of all of us, you know, I do like the Marauder, but, like, having the Marauder where you have to fight... Because, like, yes, the Marauder, you do have to fight him a certain way, but, like, that doesn't mean that he's, you know, like not vulnerable to anything like you can use detonation yeah. mod you can use hmm. sticky bomb you can yeah, use I'll, like I'll, any grenades I'll, i'm not saying it would be better if yeah you were forced to use the crucible but this uh, is, i'm pretty i'm happy it didn't go yeah. that way yeah, I'll, 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 I'll yeah. there's already a demon that you can only kill with the crucible yeah because then then it would kind of get rid of the the whole uh he's your equal uh thing if he's like a particular enemy you have to kill in such a particular way uh, because that's uh, so how he's designed. It feels more, like, it feels yeah. more like a um, a mechanic than a 
than the than the an actual okay. enemy. Yeah, pretty much. You know what I think would actually work really well is you know, mm. you know how with the chainsaw you can only use it on the lowest lowest level demons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, what if you press the same button, but if it's on a higher level demon, instead of just nothing happening, you just slice him with the crucible. Hmm. That would actually be pretty. I, I could see, yeah, like, if you have, like, crucible ammo still, yeah. and you walk up. You know, yeah, and you still get a bunch of armor or whatever. At the very is, least, yeah. at the very least, I kind of wish the crucible maybe gave you something in return. I just, so I don't you know. Just kinda use it. You shouldn't feel guilty for using the coolest looking weapon in the game. I gotta be honest, yeah. like, when I first got the weapon and I used it, my thought was, you know, what's really the point, though? I'm blowing up well, a bunch of demons anyway. They're... There is a real point for it, because, like, you're going to get into a lot of rooms where they're going to send, like, some of the biggest baddies. I mean, I eventually gonna... learned... Tyrants, really. Yeah, <laughs> tyrants, archviles, and maybe barons. I mean, I eventually you. did learn that they're pretty good for taking care of archviles. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, because, probably like, the crucible... the crucible has its use. Like, it might we seem like a... Oh, what? No, sorry, finish your statement. Oh, okay. It might seem like a kind of kind of weirdly. I mean, we're not. It, Doom's not Devil May Cry, and putting a sword in it is like what? <laughs> but um, there there is a there is a real reason to the weapon itself, and I do think that it's a little. It's a little. I think the 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 main weapon's problem is that I think uh, because of the less amount of ammo, you don't get to use it so much. That's the biggest problem that everyone's running into it with. I think it's um, kind of like when... no demon is worthy of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, the real reason that it's there is because the longer the icon of sin is on Earth, the stronger it yeah. becomes. <laughs> oh, yeah. You bet. Um, which is ironically what kills it, too. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe maybe if um, there was a different way of getting the ammo, like what Shades Masters said, you know, um, building it up with kills or something like that. And maybe, yeah. maybe uh, five... I don't know, maybe five hits instead of three. I don't know. I, I don't would, know. would probably. I, would I, would probably enough about the crucible, I think three. Uh, I think three is enough. Honestly, would, would have been fine with it just being something for uh, just for the plot, just something that you needed to get to kill the icon of sin. At but the then end. you wouldn't get to use it. That you don't get to use it now. There's almost no ammo. I know. I know. But <laughs> like, would you rather it be only in cutscenes where you skip most of it all the time, or would you be like just at least use it? I just I. I love that I can just use it. I mean, hell, like, you could turn on infinite ammo and just fucking go nuts. <laughs> but that's, True. Oh, that's cheating. Okay. Right. I, think, I, think, I think that's been a bit about, a bit enough about the, uh, <laughs> I love this. Uh, See, I love this. Here. We get to banter about this stuff. We do. <laughs> um, what else do we got? Um, I don't oh, know if you guys I, are seeing gotta... the... Sorry? Oh, uh, can I actually add something about the chainsaw really quick? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so... The chainsaw, in my opinion, uh, feels a little a little weird in this one because, like, so you know how you can only have three pips this time around instead of five? Yeah. Well, you know how they have different uh, tiered enemies and stuff, right? True. Like in 2016, three a tiers. small demon took yeah three tiers. In 2016, a, a small demon took one, uh, a medium sized demon took three, and a large demon took five. Well, because they give you three pips, why? I, it really kind of bugs me that. Uh, they didn't make it to where one kills some fodder demons, two kills like prowlers and and, oh, and uh, stuff. Sorry, there, three Houston. kills mancubuses. Sorry, there. Sure, uh, because at this point, like, it's like no point killing an imp when you can kill like a possessed soldier, for example. Yeah. Uh, sorry, there, uh, Justin. <laughs> hey, Tella, this is live. Welcome to the stream, man. Um. Yeah, it's just uh, Tella was asking if this was pre-recorded. No, this oh. is live. Hello, um, sorry. Um, now, I don't know if you guys are looking at the screen here, but we got our whole wall of weapons, so if you yes. forget about any, they're all on here. Let's talk about the ballista. Ooh. Oh, I that's a fun one. I, I, like, that one. I like that one. I like the ballista. Uh, actually, that's one of my least uh, used weapons, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, I, I, that and the plasma rifle. Um, I, yeah, I didn't use the plasma rifle too much on my first go. Plasma rifle I see is always the weapon I switch to at the very end when I'm out of ammo and I'm hitting. <laughs> yeah, me the too. Yeah. I'll be like hitting a um a um. Oh, shoot, I forgot his name. Forgot his name. 
I essentially no just used the rocket launcher and the super shotgun the entire time. Revenant, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'll, be, um, I'll be hitting a revenant with a plasma rifle. That's the wrong enemy. You're not supposed to be hitting him with it. Um, I just wanted to. Um, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, it's horribly ineffective doing that because I've run out of ammo and I'm greedy and I want to use my chainsaw only when I've used up all of my ammunition. See, I actually, I actually like what the chainsaw became in this game. Um, not only because you can actually, you know, just keep looking at it, hacking and slashing. Um, but you know, because it's your primary source of ammo, you recharge that that little one, uh, that one strike with it. You know. Mhm. Mm because I found that in the previous game, there weren't many times that I actually used it, because I was getting ammo from the enemies anyway. Yeah, there's that. That's something that I that I run into when I play that game, replay it a bunch. Is that like enemies drop ammo, and like the game gives you a, the game kind of overflows you with ammo, um, honestly. And then there's yeah. the runes that give you extra ammo and stuff. Um, so it's like you know, I see a lot of these people kind of like complaining. They're like, "Oh, I hate the fact that I'm running out of ammo too much in this game." Oh no. And, Tell well, me. there's a good reason There's a good reason why, and it's because in 2016, you pretty much never ran out. Ever. That's something I really Especially like. like the... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, it's okay. But, like, yeah, no, like, you never run out of ammo in that game, almost ever. The only time you would ever run out of ammo is if you deliberately try, and or for you, you just don't grab the, 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 the ammo uh, cells for the Argent cells. Like, that's really the time when you start running out of ammo. Um, now, so in order, in order to combat that, they made it to where ammo is, like, way less frequent. And it's a little weird to get used to it first, but once you do get used to it, it's actually really, really well put together, honestly. Now, the thing yeah. about the chainsaw is that it kind of... Out of this, in the first game, it was more like the way we see the Crucible. Now we're thinking, well, we got this great. You don't get to see much of it because, again, you'll feel bad for using it because, well, like you don't need to. Or, <laughs> in, the, uh, there's not much in the next Doom game, and... you'll have a rechargeable Crucible. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, you, get, you get to see the chainsaw a lot in this game, and that's fun. I mean, it's one of yeah. the most iconic weapons in the first game, and. When I, when I mean first game, I mean like Doom, like yeah. 1990s Doom, and you know it's quite memorable in that game. And um, oh, yeah. just to be able to have your fun with this weapon and it just enjoy the brutal animations that come with it is quite a reward. And I'm also glad that they included the mechanic in which you always have a rechargeable one pip for yeah. the um, for the chainsaw. You at least have that option. You're not going to run out of ammo. Because ammo is dang near infinite as long as you're fighting. Yep. Yeah, that's what I love about this game. Like, here's the thing. The previous game, it like it was fun. You know, you could just go ham and crazy. But even before this game came out, I knew that, you know, Doom was going to need more than just the same kind of ripping and tearing. And what they did here was the necessary evolution, you know? Uh, make every weapon a different tool. Give demons different weaknesses. Make make a thinking element to this game. So now you're not just, you know, boom, boom, smash all day. Because as awesome as it is to fight in these games, you can only do the same thing for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. This is, why, this is how this game is. Uh, the gameplay is really different, you know? You have have to jump into a battle and just sort of analyze like okay i'm running low on, on on ammo so i'm gonna need my chainsaw to mine these like low level demons to refill my ammo it makes you uh sort of think ahead and sort of plan out your moves a little more you can't it's just run in and just fire away i mean th but that is just how this game is different some people probably prefer the more just mindless hack and slash rip and tear but, but this is more for it's that own unique flavor of of gameplay mechanics where no, you actually have to take out your Swiss Army knife and decide what tool you need. Uh, should I use it's... my flamethrower to light this guy on fire and mine him for armor? Or, you know, it, it does require a lot more thinking. And, you know, again, this this game has so many mechanics and elements of it where it it, it creates an edge where 
uh, you either fall on one side of it or the other, depending on how you're going to enjoy this game. Some people probably really like the fact that, you know, you have all this, you know, extra mechanics involved in actually getting through these levels, but there's probably other people that hate it because they <laughs> just want a simple first yeah. yeah, it's just, I, mean, I think... It's a, sorry, go it's ahead. A very skill, it's a very skill-based game. Exactly. To 2015. I think here is the moment in which we praise the slow motion on the weapon wheel. Now, I'm pretty <laughs> sure the game, however, I don't think it was quite as necessary. In that game, you're just picking what you want to beat the living hell, pun intended, out of your enemies. In this game, it's very much so a um, it's a breather, sort of, basically. Yeah, it's a breather where you're yeah. Thanks for the. It's a breather in which you get to choose your strategy. You look at all of your ammunition you have at once. Now, granted, there's no scrolling in this game in the weapon wheel. In the first game, you had to scroll for everything. Yeah. And in this one, it's all right there. You know how much ammo we have for every single weapon. And you get to coordinate exactly what you need to do. You see all of your enemies in front of you, and you say, all right, I'm going to hit this guy with this thing, I'm going to hit this guy with that thing, and then maybe I'll use, like, a, a weapon mod here or something. He coordinated. Now, I don't know how you guys feel, but I'm actually having a lot of fun with the blood punch mechanic. Yes! Oh my god, it's <laughs> the oh, best! The blood punch it's the best! <laughs> I love it because oh. it, it creates like a, a sort of sub game in your head where it's like, okay, I got to glory kill these guys. Then, you know, punch the cyber mancubus or something, you know, and it wipes out every weapon on him See, or like, okay. Now I do think this really emphasizes just the raw strength of the slayer. I mean, he punches so hard <laughs> that a wave of energy just comes from his fists though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cost, rather, so I actually do have an issue with it. Oh, sorry, go on ahead, JR. Uh, I actually do have an issue with the blood punch. So for me, it's the same button. It's like right... It's the same button that you use when you go to glory kill. So several oh, times yeah. it happens. <laughs> I go, I go to glory kill, I've done that! A little, yeah. you know, low-level zombie, right? And then I end up blood punching him and wasting my blood punch. I've so done that before! It, it's, like, it's not lined up quite right. You end up wasting it. So I don't really <laughs> like that. It's a... Yeah, uh, yeah. It's very rare that that happens, but it does happen to me as well. <laughs> but even though it can happen, because like when you when you do glory kill a demon, and the same thing with the blood punch, you you still get health from it because it is technically a glory kill when you do it with the blood punch. Um, but I have had that happen to me, but it's very rare that that happens. Um, not all the time, but like uh, just yesterday when I was fighting a marauder and I went into glory kill, it did happen to me. Um, it killed him still, but it did happen, and it did it did make me sad. Cause it was like, oh, I want to glory kill him. <laughs> I can't tell like, you how shit. many how many times I was like, um, in like the midst of this this rabid fight in in one of the levels where I'm trying to stack up my blood punches for the cyber manks or mobs or whether I'm doing a challenge or something and I mm -hmm. instinctively try and like push a zombie away with my fist and I realize I just fucking blood punch it <laughs> <laughs> oh shit I just wasted my blood punch I gotta set it up again shit I just used my second blood punch <laughs> yeah blood punch blood punch is a very it, it, it's an ability that you really gotta like and, and trust me like I get really wasteful with it too. cause once you do beat the game you do get two and like yeah. you can charge it up way quicker. And if you get all the sentinel crystals, you can make it to where armor recharges it quickly, health recharges it quickly. So it's like you're never really running out of them unless you're deliberately trying. But like blood punch is way better than I initially thought it was going to be because like you know we've all played these like snap maps that have like different iterations of blood punch and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and it it really surprises me that. Uh, it and Eternal. I mean, all the, all the mechanics, you know, that we made in Snap Map, uh, they definitely feel way more refined in Eternal and whatnot. But like, yeah, th just the when 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 you use like the flamethrower and then you use the ice bomb on like a bunch of little tiny demons and shit, and then you walk up to them and punch them and you just explode into like <laughs> yeah. hundreds of armor and health. Combo in the entire game. Yes, and then and then like the fact that like uh, you can punch a fucking cybermaker or a mancubus and it wipes out their weapons, arachnitrons that wipes oh, out their weapons. Oh, I love weapons. that. I it's love that. Like you have to figure the them most, out. 
it's one of the most saddest. It can kill pinkies in one shot. <laughs> Do you know how amazing that is to me? <laughs> like, that that um, is great, but let's keep in mind that our regular melee does not do damage. That's anymore. true. That is That's true. It is weak. Yeah. It's more of like a push them away kind of thing, you know? Right, yeah. Right. It's like you don't want the zombie to hug to hit you. This so is you a punch him first. And it kind of backs away. But I <laughs> did enjoy punching uh, imps into submission in the first game. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do miss that. Like um, being able to like uh, glory kill uh, zombies just by clicking it a couple times and whatnot. True. I do miss that because I did try. That was one of the very first things I tried when I started the game up, and I was like, "Ah, oh, you can't do it anymore." I feel, I feel ah. like, <laughs> honestly, I feel like such a bully in this game sometimes because I'll be walking, <laughs> I'll, I'll be walking, and there'll just be like a zombie, and I'm punching. I'm like, "Move it, chump! <laughs> Move it! Keep moving! <laughs> Move it!" <laughs> You just want to be an asshole to it. You're just, you're just punching him, yeah. Um, oh. But no, I think uh, I think blood punch because like, I think it's actually really a, a good thing that you're. And now hear me out when I say this. So like, you know, the Slayer's actual punch is weak as shit. But I think that's mm -hmm. actually kind of a good thing because the thing about it is that like, a lot of FPS games have a melee attack, and most of the time they suck ass, <laughs> and they don't really do shit. Uh, almost at all, especially if you're playing games like fucking Borderlands and whatnot, and if you don't have, like, a melee build in that game, melee ain't gonna do anything. It's just there to be there. Um, and then, like, 2016 had, had like, where you could butt the fucking demons with your gun and stuff, you know? But it was like, you know, that's kind of like a traditional FPS thing, and it, it really doesn't serve almost any purpose other than to, like, punch them and, and whatnot, but it doesn't really do much. Um, I think it's really good that this game kind of iterated on the melee attack with an actual overpowered punch that actually does serve as a weapon to uh, explode a shit ton of enemies into armor, wipe out uh, like weapons off of mancubuses and stuff, and generally does about the same amount of damage as a, as a super shotgun blast. Yeah. It does a lot of damage, and um, it can wipe out enemies around you um, and whatnot. Now, what? It's uh fucking great. Now, what about some of the mods? What do you guys think of the mods here? I have a lot of general opinions of, of the mods, but I'll let everyone else do their theirs first, because there's a couple there, um, I definitely want to talk about. There was actually um, one mod that, like, it's great. It does a lot of damage, but it takes a while, and I feel like maybe some of you know which one I'm talking about. It's, um... It's, I think it's called the Destroyer Blade mod for oh, the Ballista. Yeah. Uh, Ballista, yep. Plenty of damage, uh -huh. but takes so long. <laughs> so the Destroyer Blade is basically the Ballista's version of the Siege Cannon. Oh, um, yeah, the Goss Cannon, right? But unfortunately, though, see, this is the exact same issue I have with the Microwave Beam, with the Plasma Rifle. Mm -hmm. I have found that there are good uses for the Microwave Beam, right? Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, but if you're in the midst of a really big battle and there's a shit ton of demons all coming after you, it's not a viable weapon. But, like, yeah. when you're going through the campaign, there's, like, there's little sections where they kind of throw, like, maybe two or three big demons after you or just, like, a couple little ones in an Arachnotron. The microwave beam is very useful um, because, like, you can lock down a demon, throw, shoot a grenade while still m microwaving him and stuff, flame him while you're microwaving him. You can lock down a demon really good with it, but the problem is, is that, like, you're so fucking slow, and it does, like, yeah. nothing to him. It takes yeah. so long, and it wastes so much ammo. I think um, if they I, actually let you move faster with the uh, microwave. Yeah, the, the, the two things I would have liked is an upgrade where it it, it it does more damage, and another, and the master upgrade, what I, here's, I don't know if anyone else thought this, but you know how it's, it's a beam that locks onto one enemy, right? Yeah, like, like split. I, I I was, I was, I've played a lot of games where there are zapping abilities that can lock onto multiple targets if you upgrade it. I'm surprised they didn't have uh, uh, the mastery mod where it can lock on to like three or four targets at once. And it like splits between them, you know? Like, I'm really surprised that's not a mastery for it. Because I think that would have made the mod like way better. One of, um, one of my complaints about the weapons in the previous game was that they all kind of just looked the same. Um, but these ones, like, you can tell spot on which one you're using, you know, mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, 
it was originally the heavy assault rifle. Now it's a heavy cannon. You know, it's it's got this red color to it. It has a very AK-47 kind of feel to it. Um, yep. The heavy cannon, I have to say, was probably my least favorite in the first game. And it's probably evolved to be one of, if not my absolute favorite, just because of how efficient it feels to wield in this game. It's very efficient, mm-hmm. yeah. So a lot more than I genuinely kind of gave it credit, because, like, I'm going to add on to that, because, like, you know, the, the sniper mod, the precision the precision yes. shot? I genuinely thought that was going to be, like, one of the most, like, useless mods ever. Uh, no, It was it, fairly useless in the first it, game. It, it, it was fairly useless in the first game, yeah. Uh, but no, uh, in fact, in this game, oh my god, it's kind of needed for, like, higher difficulties, honestly. <laughs> like, you it, really yeah. need it, honestly. I mean, in the first game, it really was just a scope. It, you know, it was, was kind of... Yeah. Why, why do I need to aim like this in a Doom game? The yeah. whole point of Doom is that you get down on sights. But I'm this actually, actually um... gives you a legit sniper. Yeah. On but... your rifle. Um... So um oh actually um I really enjoy the uh uh the uh, the machine gun in this game. Um I really like the the shield element. It doesn't seem oh, like something you chain gun. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't seem like something you'd really need in a Doom game, but that shield can be pretty useful in certain moments. Yes, um I have a lot to add on with that mod in particular. I use that I I use the that shield mod all the time. Um and usually when I, I don't use it like when I'm just kind of like casually fighting demons, I'm using it when I'm locking down a particular demon. Like this is what I'll do um, because you have the mastery mod for it that shoots the shield when you get enough damage built up and you release the button and it shoots the fucking shield, which does a really good amount of damage, might I add. Um, what you do is you you throw down an ice bomb burn the fucker, shoot two grenades, bring the shield out, <laughs> unleash hell upon him, and then once you get that like damage all the way up, release, you get so much health, so much armor, and you wipe out demons so efficiently with it, it's unbelievable the amount of DPS that thing can actually withstand. Okay. Um, oh yeah, like you really have to... One of, one of the things about the mechanics in this game, and that mod in particular does so great, is you have to combine every single element of your arsenal to get the most out of it. And that shield does that in such a great fucking way. Um, oh my god. Like, if you ever watch the the gameplay that I posted in the Discord, you'll notice, like, almost every single time there's, like, a big enemy, I'm using that combo all the time. It really, really, really helps, especially on higher difficulties. Oh, okay, that yep. Um, now, um, here's a question. Who, who here unlocked, um, unlocked the Unmaker? Me! <laughs> Me! Oh, is it just us two? Yeah, I think it's just us two. <laughs> oh, okay. A little awkward, but okay. Um, all right. So, uh, Justin, what are your thoughts on it? Um, you know, it's... <sighs> God, I hate to say this about it, but it's not a very viable weapon, to be honest. It's a little underwhelming. See, um, like, and I think I think it goes back to that like whole uh, thing where there's not a lot of ammo for BFG yeah. at all. Uh, they really limit you on the BFG in this game. Uh, and, uh, I mean, rightfully so. It makes yeah. sense, because it literally can wipe out, like, almost every demon in one go. Um, and you don't even need to shoot it straight at them. You just shoot it above them, and everything is dead. Uh, the Unmaker, though, I think the Unmaker is... I-, I think there is a use for it, but it's really only useful when you're trying to single out a target. Um, like, yeah. There's a lot of people there who are going to say that like I've heard some people say that the Unmaker is underpowered. It's not underpowered. It kicks no, ass. It's, the problem it's is not underpowered at all. It needs it's, more ammo. It it's the could... one gun that needs more ammo to me. Exactly. I think I think having it use like the same ammo as a BFG, uh, kind of. I mean, I understand. I understand why they did that because it is like 
the one of the strongest weapons in the whole game and like if you're able to use that like all the time like and when you play doom 64 which is where that game where that gun originated from you get a healthy amount of plasma ammo and when you upgrade upgrade that thing to max it is literally like like you are under you cannot be beaten yeah um now and i you saw have so much ammo for it like i watched angry joe's uh review of this game and i have to agree with him on the unmaker like you went and found six hidden keys then yeah. fought six hidden high-powered challenges to unlock this thing yep. just you know just let the player have their fun with it you know yeah you know like it, you know, I don't like. I understand their sentiment. You know, balance is key, and I do agree with balance. But like, you know, in a game like this, uh, especially how crazy it is, especially the fact that they give you cheats. I, I guess like the, their whole reasoning behind it, you know, n not putting into it as much is because oh, you just use cheats. But see, like here's here's my sentiment on that. Like, so I play uh, Devil May Cry a shit ton, and I've gotten to the point where I've beaten the game on every difficulty, and I lock and I, and I unlock the super characters that have like infinite devil trigger but i never really bring myself to use them because it's cheating i mean you know you have i have fun with it sure but like i'm one of those players who like who really want to get the most out of it without having to re resort to just like outside sources to like give me like boosts i really like putting myself into that challenge mode that's what we're um, talking about not. um we're talking about the unmaker oh i haven't unlocked that yet <laughs> I don't even and know how to use the cheats, to be honest. Um, like, I've, I've unlocked cheats, but I don't know, like, what menu you go through to get, to get to oh, that. Oh, no, it's not a menu. It's not a menu. No, what you do is, like, you, when you go to the mission select screen, I, let's see, you're on PlayStation Crash. You press, uh, you, go to the, you go to the, yeah, you go to the mission that uh, you want to play. And the mission select. Square. Yeah, uh, on the mission select, and you hit square, and there's a menu that pops up, it, and you can turn on cheats, like Skulls from Halo, pretty much. That's what they really gave me the vibes of, by the way. It really felt uh, like Skulls from Halo. <laughs> um, so do we have any, um, do we have any more, um, any more thought? Oh, actually, have we talked about the BFG yet, or is there much to talk about it? Oh, the BFG is the BFG. It's, it's the it's a it's still the big fucking game. Yeah. It still wipes the floor with everything. I feel like this is um this weapon is a case of you know if it ain't broke don't fix it. Don't fix it. Yep. Yeah. You know it does what it needs to do. It didn't really need to be changed. Um and they didn't. Nope. Um and they didn't change I it. Been very happy. BFG. We'll talk about the the bigger BFG later on. I think though. <laughs> But, um, you know, I, I'm not going to lie, though. A hole into the surface of Mars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, though. Like, um, I I really like the fact that they didn't change the BFG, but it really... I, I've been thinking about this for such a long time. Wouldn't it be so cool if there was mods for the BFG, you know? Yeah. I, I, sure I know what um, be done with that, though. Yeah, but, like, the, the, way, the way I'm saying it is that, like... Um, it would have just been so okay. So uh, I know I, I I use like other games as outsources to kind of uh, bring the example I'm kind of bringing. Yep. I am in no way saying like change the BFG, but like I think like if if the game is going to be able to be modded, what I would like to see is like someone modding the BFG so you could put different mods onto it because like so like uh any anyone heard of Jack and Daxter at all? Uh, sorry. So okay, so the sequel for Jack and Daxter one. Uh, introduced guns to the game, right? There were four different guns you could use, but there were different mods for them, uh, and they were, like, the same gun. And there was this one gun that was extremely powerful. I don't remember exactly what it does, but it was basically that game's version of the BFG. And you could use different mods for it. So, like, one of them shot, like, this huge, like, nuclear blast, you know? But the other one had, like, the super high-powered, like, electrical laser that would wipe everything out so quickly about about the same speed as the unmaker uh i would say like it it just it was good for singling out targets and whatnot i would have been i would that would have been really cool if like they added like new mods to it you know See, like little cool things you could do with it as you speak i'm trying to think of like mods that could be added on but it's just kind of mm -hmm. like it does what it it's needs hard. to do it targets every yeah. nearby enemy explodes all the the weaker ones and damages the bigger ones. oh yeah no. It's, uh, like, yeah. The only thing I could see being done with it would be something like what you said with the high-powered laser. 
Yeah. I think if it were more focused damage that you could do to hit bosses, then I could yeah. see that. Like, imagine... That's final, true. That... Of, you were, like, blasting it with, like, a really, really strong <laughs> laser. <laughs> I, wasted, yeah. I wasted so much BFG on the Icon of Sin. I'd shoot him and he, like, goes around, but we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, we'll that. Oh, that hurt. Um... Any uh, any more thoughts on these weapons, or are we good to uh, move to the next section? Oh, te yeah, uh, Telepoopy has a great, a great mm. thing right here. So, oh. so why not make the Unmaker a BFG mod? Exactly. That's a good point. Know, because, like, uh, uh, as cool as the Unmaker, because I, I know why the Unmaker is in the game. It's because Hugo Martin's first Doom game was Doom 64. Um, and mm. he really, really loves that game. That's kind of why that well, game that explains a lot. got in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The there's, there's a lot of... He he loves Doom sixty four, but I think I think that would have been a better uh, thing is to like being able to unlock mods for the BFG like what Telepoopy says where uh, have have like the Unmaker as a BFG mod pretty much like you can put on like the Unmaker cast onto it and, and whatnot. I, you know I think he still would have been able to have that fulfillment of being able to have the Unmaker in the game. In yeah, which you see. Yes, it is visually, yes, you can tell. It is the Unmaker. And like you said, yeah. a cast. I think that would have been the best of both worlds in which you have a mod for the BFG that does something different. Yeah. And you'd also have that um, that personal gain from... However, okay. what would be odd for that would be ammo count. Yeah, because you still have to deal with ammo. So there, there's a lot of things that really kind of bounce between it, you know. Um, but... Yeah, I think it, I think it would have been like uh, a kind of a cool concept if they were like, hey, you know, let's give like the best fucking gun in the game like some new cool mods for people to play with, because like you know the BFG, for instance, you know there are some bosses where they can dodge it really easily and whatnot, and the tracers will still get them. Um, like for the Marauder, for instance, like you know how he blocks it pretty much all the time. Well, because you can use the 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 Unmaker. Uh, you can single them out more uh, and and whatnot with it. And that's why I think mods would have been kind of a, a cooler approach to it. But you know, yeah. I think I have to mention the the best gun in the game for me by far is the uh, super shotgun with the meat hook and the grappling. Oh, oh the yeah. That. Oh, that's I mean, a blast. <laughs> no pun. That adds a whole new dimension of gameplay to the game here because when you're able to just you know grapple out of combat by like you know you, you shoot some cacodemon with your meat book and then you just sort of spider-man out of, <laughs> out of the see yeah because like oh, yeah. That's that's a, that's that's that, uh... oh yeah um, great oh i found the meat hook so satisfying oh yeah that the meat hook is the best thing ever <laughs> instead of parkouring my way across a part of the map i found myself just shooting the zombie that i see and yeah, getting up there through those means instead, just because it's so freaking cool. I love yeah, that they yeah. it has that it has that ability where if you hook to a demon and press the jump button, you you literally soar up in the air and, and whatnot. And it's oh, it's so good. I love how the super shotgun went from being just a powerful gun with no mods to probably the most unique one yet. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, yeah. whenever I use that meat hook. Like, as soon as I click that button, in my heart, I become, like, a reverse scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Just, <laughs> I'm gonna get over here! <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel whenever I play it. <laughs> fun using the grapple hook that I almost wish that it wasn't even part of any weapon mod, that it was just part of the Praetor suit. Like, kind of like how the grenade launcher and the flamethrower, that, that you just have this ability to just sort of grapple yeah. on any... I find that there is yeah. some... That's something I would have liked to have seen if I could have recommended a, a different love... way to go about it. I mean, partnered out with the wall climbing, and you have to admit, you got me a very nice Spider-Man flavored treat here. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, like, for people who, I... like... Oh, what? Sorry, going ahead. Uh, you know, because, like, a lot of people do not like the platforming in this game. And, you know, I can I understand. like it, actually. I like it. I'm I'm gonna say that right now. But that's mostly just because like I am actually a big platformer kind of guy. I do I do I yeah, play my Crash Bandicoots, my Mario, my Spyro, my my Ratchet and yeah, Clank. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I played all those, and I genuinely think 
that the platforming in this game is done very well. It could have been way fucking worse because most single, uh, most first person shooter platforming is awful. <laughs> it's so bad. But this game, it's really good. That's it's actually a... really good. <laughs> well, I think the problem is it just requires a different skill set because, you know, not everybody that's good at FPSs are necessarily good at platforming. And yeah. I found that out actually in my snap map of Psychotron when I had the original Wall of Torment and seeing just how many people could not climb that thing. And even now, when the platforms don't move, still cannot yeah. climb that. It's like yeah. they just do not have platforming skills at all. So when I yeah. saw how heavy the game went into platforming, I was like, oh, no. A lot of people are going to be pissed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want platforming I think... in my Doom game. Eh. <laughs> See, I actually... <laughs> I don't know why, yeah, but the one issue I have with the uh, the wall grabbing, which is weird, because I, I actually love it. To... Yeah, I, I know, know exactly what you're going to talk about. Wall grabbing, but uh, there's there's a part where uh, you have to press like the right stick to grab yep. onto it. If you've already exhausted all your dashes, mm. and that's really annoying because like, especially if you're not used to it yet, you, you yeah. I often I often forgot to do it. It would have been nice if they would have just made that automatic, where if you're next oh, to yeah. it, it's automatic. But that is something that I can 100% get behind. I mean, I've gotten used to it so much at this point, but, like, uh, I'm on the same vein with uh, Crash there. I think it would have been a better idea as, like, just if you get to the wall, you just connect to it. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about, you know, having to press a button. Because, like, it definitely, when, when I did it the first time, it, because, like, I played so many of your guys' snap maps that have the wall climbing in it, you know, that I'm just fucking used to walking up to the wall and just get lifted up. You know, like normally. <laughs> I just sorry. imagine you. I'm sorry. You know what's funny? Oh yeah. I'm just. I just imagine you playing Doom Eternal, going up to one of those walls and going, "Come on! Why am I going, not going up? What's just going sta on? just this standing there problem. waiting to be lifted." <laughs> now I I know you had planned to talk about the enemies here, but. I see there's no point in which we talk about the level design. Oh, yeah. Design. I mean, design. I mean, we're still... Because that, that still kind of falls into, like, gameplay. I think we can talk about some level design here. Um, oh, I, I, I just want to say that the arenas and... Because, I mean, yeah, I'll call them arenas. Because, I mean, everything oh, yeah. here is an arena. And, oh, yeah. I just love the way in which every part of the level just emphasizes a sense of movement. Now, my philosophy yep. behind game is obviously not objectively every game should be what my taste is, but I do have a science behind what makes a game fun for me. Mm -hmm. And that that's why I felt like Doom 2016 was just so revolutionary and why I absolutely love Doom Eternal. Now, the platforming, of course, a lot of people don't like it because it's, it's not in the vein of which they're used to. But yeah. I do think size is a sense of movement. You feel that rush of, hey, this guy's moving really, really fast. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. I think if anything, like... personally, I like I don't know how other people would have liked this, but I think it would have been cool to actually incorporate the meat hook into some platforming. I, that would have been... That's what I thought it was originally meant for when I first saw it, actually. This guy seems like and a missed that's... opportunity. And that's interesting because... Uh... I know I'm fucking gonna 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 do another uh you know example. Uh, Devil May Cry does that. The fourth hmm. the fourth and fifth game because Nero the main one of the main characters has an arm that can grab enemies towards him, and they do that with their platforming. They'll they'll have sections where like you you have to like these like little little doohickeys start floating up in the air and they go like up and down, and you have to like time it to where you grab onto it so you get enough air time to grab to the next one. Pretty much. I think um, I'm sad that there's no like um, no um, point in which you have flying enemies that you'd have to grapple through like that. That would have been mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like I thought yeah. there was gonna be a point where you have to cross a chasm and then grapple onto a cacodemon and sling. <laughs> That'd be up. so cool. Yeah. You just hang onto this one cacodemon while like yeah. going down the chasm. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, or, <laughs> or, you know what, you do it to a pain elemental and he starts jogging the entire way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, uh, f I think my, like, I enjoy the, um, like, the, the platforming. I actually love the, the feeling of just climbing up a wall. But my main yeah. complaint is that there's too much of, like, 
jump really far, grab, jump really far, grab. It starts yeah. to feel like the Maybe same thing. Creative with it. Yeah, it it starts to feel like the same thing after a while. It, it, yeah. It's almost like it's more of a platforming game with first-person shooter elements in it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't it go does. far as to say that, oh, but yeah. I do understand the subject. But no, I mean, but the, so so damn much of this game is platforming from one place to another. It, and, it's and really a combat as well. Board. Inside the combat, yeah, inside um, the combat is there's a lot of platforming as well to kind of like get an advantage on your, <laughs> on your enemies and whatnot. And One I, thing, but I love that. Like it's just like you know, because we've all put in like the, the swings and whatnot, and they feel really good. But I think like if we didn't have the the meat hook, then the swings. I mean, of course they had the swings like. Uh, in level one and two before you got the super shotgun but like i feel like the swings you know if you didn't have the super shotguns meat hook would be a little unnecessary but when you have them in there oh my god <laughs> oh Something else i'd want to say about the platforming is although it's very repetitive and does not get creative i will say a step up from doom 2015 which is just a matter of okay i see a green light i almost double jump now <laughs> yeah, yeah. If there was any, if there was any platforming section that genuinely annoyed me, it's those damn the, jump pads on Erdak. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone had trouble. Uh, with that. Well, it's because they don't always they put you in the rings. Those. Yeah, you have to like. Uh, they, I actually they, didn't struggle too much. With it's those. cool. They, they but... shoot you. They shoot you so far to it, but you still have to like double jump to it. And Which, whatnot, and you still have to time your dashing correctly, because sometimes, like, you'll start falling b below the circle, and you're like, No, yeah. fuck! No! <laughs> it just doesn't really feel like that was intentional, though. It didn't feel like it was intentional. Like, like it feels like, like you're supposed to go to through. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't know, know how many of you guys have played Control. Sorry? Uh, one of the guys... first upgrades I got uh, oh. with, <laughs> was the uh, added air control, so that you can maneuver more in the air. That's yes. actually yeah. Really cool. That's one of the first ones I got when I had the opportunity. Yeah. I'm yet to try that one out. That oh, one's so uh, good. Oh, it's so good. It makes aerial and platforming combat so much better. Oh my lord! It's so the other good. one was the one that slows down time when you press like uh, your alternator. Right? I think yeah. Yep. That, that that's helpful how many, too. How many of you guys have played Undertale? Uh, I not me. Played it. I didn't finish it though. But I, I have seen a lot of gameplay for it. Have you ever gotten to the point with the vents? So we had to like jump on the vents and whatnot, and you had to do like a puzzle and stuff. Yes, and that's, like, different... what, that's what the Ur Urdak um, jump pads reminded me of. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a kind of frustrating, weird, like you're not really very in control, you're just being tossed around. Mm hmm. I mean, I, I still like the Urdak jump pads, but I, I start a little there. <laughs> you get used to them after a while. It's almost like Sonic the Hedgehog. You're just getting pushed along. <laughs> Rolling yeah. around at the speed of sound. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, um, one of the most useful things in in the mechanics for this game is something so simple, and that is the dash system. Oh, the dash, dash system. That alone changes See, the game. It's so good. It's yeah. in a map called Mystic Quest. Was that Undertale? And, no, no, no. It was the the dash mechanic. Oh. I, in um in twenty sixteen, a snap map. Oh, okay. I remember first seeing it in a map called Mystic Quest, and I thought it was the most genius thing ever. Hmm. And he introduced a dash mechanic in. Doom uh, Eternal. Now, in Doom 2016, because it was a snap map, it, you know, priority is just making something creative, not necessarily making a game. Uh, you could spam the dash mechanic. You could, like, the dash mechanic was set so that if you press down on the L, not L, sorry, on the R2 um, stick, it would exponentially. However, you could just keep it on forever. If you just constantly held on to that, um, stick, you would just have your speed be this ridiculous number. And you could basically just dash around. Your physics would be whack with them. You'd jump to, like, the other side of a of a room. And But, of course, I don't think a balanced Doom game would have something like that. So I think they did the best thing they possibly could have with the dash mechanic in Doom Eternal. Yeah. 
All right. Well, um, a lot of fun in combat, you know. It adds. Yeah. I, I like the aerial aspect of the combat. How it's not just two dimensions like in in regular first person shooter games. You're actually swinging around, jumping up in the air. It's like a, it just adds like a three dimensional element to the combat that is really unique, and the dash mechanic plays into that well. True. Um, all right. Do we have um, any other thoughts on the the main mechanics and gameplay? Um, you know, uh, not really. Okay. No, I... Um, because let me ask you, what is the use of huge guns if there are no huge guts? Um, oh boy. and there's a lot of guts to rip out from simple zombies to Baphomet. I mean, Icon of Sin. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> uh, we got a lot to go through here, because <laughs> there's oh, twice man. as many demons. Mm, twice the pride, double the fall. <laughs> exactly. Um, all I right. Think I, I think the first thing I need to point out is how I like the uh, new look of the demons. They, they really went away from the 2016 look, where they kind of remind me more of, like, space aliens. This one, they kind of went back to the old Doom aesthetic, where they're more... Uh, they're they're more uh, humanoid looking, more bestial, and I like that. I see, like that direction that they took. It. See, I actually have some words, um, some words on that, and I think specifically to Justin, it's no secret as to how I felt about um, some the of those. Mancubus the the, the Mancubus, it was the Mancubus, the Cyber Demon, and I think it stops there. Basically, I it just felt in like kind of. In a bit of a contrast to what you just said, Crash, um, how you know they all had kind of these alien looks, and I felt like, you know, well, if that's the design you're going for, you should be consistent with it. So when I saw that they were going back to um, the classic uh, cyber demon with the tyrant, as well as the um, as well as the mancubus, I was actually not happy about that. They felt very out of place for me, but but with a little bit of lore changes. Um, and just some getting used to it, I kind of came to accept them. Here's what I'll say about the Mancubus. I love the 2016 version. It feels like a walking Sarlacc pit to me. It gives that <laughs> vibe of a big hungry monster. But if I'm being, if I'm going out of my personal uh, art style and uh, looking at it objectively, I think this is actually a better Mancubus design. Um, because even just in, like, its facial expressions, it just reads for the type of monster it's supposed to be. Um, yeah. I can't really say the same thing about the Cyber Demon, personally. Although, I'll admit, it reads more as a demon. One of my yeah. one of the big things that I didn't like about the Tyrant's design in its reveal was the, the beady black the eyes. eyes. Yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah. Um, but I immediately liked it so much more when they turned them orange. Um, yeah. They did that for the Arachnotron as well, because uh, the Arachnotron had like really bright blue glowing eyes, and then they uh, they gave them like these uh, like they don't glow anymore, but they're like goat like blue eyes. Yeah, uh, where they look kind of weird and slanted. True, um, and I, I think that was a because you can see in that picture right there at the bottom with the Arachnotron, the blue glowing eyes. It doesn't look like that anymore. Yeah, um, and I do like the way they changed as well. Um, but yeah, um, I'll. I'll I'll give my two cents on the Mancubus. The Mancubus in Doom 2016, I thought, was a really creative direction that they took him. And that's my personal preference. And I do understand why they went back to the original design. You know, it's getting back to that classic Doom. They are trying to just really go down to the roots. However, yeah. he's just really hard to look at. That's the thing. <laughs> Which is why I always try to get rid of him first. I'm like, my <laughs> god, dude, you are so ugly. I'm gonna have to kill you first. What's wrong, man? You have a problem with looking at six man nipples? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? Never seen some man nipples on him before? <laughs> By the way, I will actually say, I really like this, like, even though I've had mixed feelings about this Mancubus design, I really love the new Cyber Mancubus. Oh, yeah, the new Cyber Mancubus is fucking he, awesome. It's full Sorry, armor. It's yeah, <laughs> it's not... The The other one was cool, but it felt very much like a big box, you know? Um, yeah. This one actually feels like armor, you know? 
They use the yeah. blood punch no. to free him from the Matrix. Here's the funny thing, yeah. okay? Um, here's the funny thing. If you read the codexes in Doom 2016, um, for the Cybermancubus, they describe how they were trying to put a full suit of armor on it, but it kept outgrowing it, which is why it only yep. had partial armor. <laughs> I guess they finally got a suit this time, because it's yep. full armored now. <laughs> so, like... The demons, and uh, I want to add to that that whole thing about really talking about like the the really difference in the uh, uh, the designs. I, I did I did tell the Zuli that uh, they did confirm that it's mostly a species thing. Yeah. So like, um, because like mostly for the Mancubus, I gotta say, because uh, there's like different species of Mancubus and whatnot. But for like the the tyrant and the cyber demon, uh, the way they explained that is that like. Uh, those are two different species, like so, yeah, uh, two different demons and whatnot. But like the Mancubus in particular, I won't lie, it was a little jarring for me as well to go like, oh, they're not going back to that like weird bud, that fat bug looking chitinous uh, uh, look anymore. Um, and I was like, oh, I, I wonder how they're going to explain that. And luckily, uh, they it did. was really easy how they they did, which was really I mean, nice because now, now that it's confirmed that. Doom 1 and 2 take place in the same universe as Oh, Doom we're gonna get to Doom that. Universe. We have a whole section yeah. for that kind of stuff. I mean, oh, yeah. um, just saying, like, yeah. now it's like, even if that weren't the case, even if they kept all the Doom 2016 designs, you'd still have to accept that all these guys exist in the same multiverse. Yeah. True. In, in, um, in general. Um, now, the one thing that I, I, I want to add, though, is uh, I love... I love the icon of sin. I mean, look, look at that motherfucker. The icon of sin. Now, no. here's but the funny thing. I, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, the one thing I, I I want to I mean, they did a really good job with him, by the way. He like after fighting him like a couple times so far, uh, he definitely feels like a modern icon of sin. Fight. Um, he really does. Uh, Do you think now, John Romero's head is in there somewhere? <laughs> I I. If 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 not, then probably Hugo Martin's head is probably in there. And so it was. <laughs> and so it was that the betrayer's son, John Romero, became the icon no, of sin. But you know what? I, I uh, the one thing I will say about the icon of sin design, though, is that as much as I do think it looks really fucking good, and they got the the head and the facial features of it spot on. By the way, they did. A <laughs> oh yeah. Really good job oh yeah. Then I'm really happy that he's not just a wall anymore. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> But, uh, you know, if I gotta be honest, um, I kinda am not a fan of the just giant-looking human body. I was really hoping they'd make him more... way more... Okay, so, like, have any of you have seen the Icon of Sin fight in Brutal Doom? Yeah, I all? saw it with, like, the forearms, right? That's what I kind of wanted out of him. I wanted something just abomination, like, giant Godzilla-sized abomination oh. demon. <laughs> The Icon of Sin is pretty big here, but the Icon of Sin in Doom 2016, shown as a dormant skeleton, was shown to be much, much bigger than this. Much bigger than this, yeah. Um, like, and I guess all out of your like your view. And I guess the way they would probably explain that is because like in in 2016, his body was ripped to shreds. Like he he was all kinds of fucked up. And I think the way they would explain it is that like they gave him a new body. And they they resurrected him with like a like a new shape to him. I think that's how they would explain it. Um, um, yeah, but I true. I am kind of I am kind of sad that we don't get to see that that version that the 2016 one was setting it up as. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, like, I have a lot of. Made me think that it was like a giant snake or eel, just because you don't see yeah. the too many ribs there. Now I yeah. actually have a lot of bones to pick surrounding the icon of sin that I'm gonna talk ah. about in the. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even intentional either. Um, but I'm going to get to that in the story section. In terms of design, I think his armor's cool, but when I see it in yeah. game, it remind like I look at it and I'm like, that looks like giant Anubis with Yoda ears and huge pecs. <laughs> um, yeah. But here's the thing. But here's the thing. When you tear off that armor... That is like the coolest icon of sin I've ever seen. Oh, Cause yeah. It it's literally. Be... His face is literally an icon. They got it perfectly. Yeah, yeah. They, they did a fucking. And I also just. I, I also love how, like, when, when you do, like, shoot him and damage him, like, 
you just see chunks of him just flying off and stuff, and you just see how much, like, blood and guts uh, you've turned him into and stuff. It's so satisfying to see him, like, walk around just, like, just a bunch of chunks <laughs> and my, stuff. Uh, my favorite attack of his is when the pentagram comes over his forehead and the laser comes down. Yep. Uh. Um... I think another one of my fair demons was actually the um, the Archvile. Ooh, um, yes. I, I don't know, Archvile like... Archvile is Flame spiny. Boy. <laughs> well, uh, here's the fun thing. I love it. Now, I, I said this... I mentioned this to Justin in one of his videos once. Um, the good thing about um, playing as the Archvile is that um, he's the safest demon to play as because he comes installed with a firewall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad that none of you got that. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just making sure. <laughs> um, I'm, I don't know why, but I'm very drawn to the Arachnatron as a mini Spider Master mind. It's just yeah. kind of fun to see that thing. And they actually have lore for it, too. They literally took the genetics, the DNA from the Spider Master mind. And funny enough, USC wanted to manufacture it as their own demons, but lost control of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. As oh, you do. The, the demon design in this game in general, I feel like they embrace this concept that these things are just so ridiculous. I mean, yeah. they don't, don't have to make sense. This is a video game. We get to do whatever the hell we want. And, and, Let's make and these fun. are demons as well. Like these are right. divine creatures from hell and stuff. So they don't need to make sense. They're just right. they um, just are. They better, they look cool. <laughs> like yeah. the spines, the spines coming from the imps in this game. Of course, reminiscing the original Doom One and Doom Two designs. This yep. this reminds you're playing a video game that doesn't give a fuck. It doesn't give a shit what you think. By about the way, it. It, it is what it is. Since we're also since we're talking about enemies in general here, this is also a, a good time for us to talk about our favorite glory kills too. <laughs> oh yeah, glory kills. Um, one of my favorites. In fact, I've got two of them. I'm trying to remember the second one. I really like the one where you tear the arm and stab the bone into the skull. Um, oh, yeah. that's for the the slithering one, the uh... the, the the prowler and the the whiplash. Happens. Yeah, yeah. Yep. There's another one. I'm trying to remember it. Oh, um, I remember what the other glory kill was. I like, but that's for that's for a demon that we'll talk about after all these fellas. <laughs> I tell, um, I can tell you what my favorite one is right now, and it was the f it was one of the first ones I did when I found the enemy. <laughs> I love the glory kill where you get behind the arachnatron and just <laughs> flip push him, him over. <laughs> you flip him over and he lands on his brain and just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> you just flip that him. That is my favorite <laughs> glory kill ever. It's just you, you just and you just see him like freaking out and he's flipping and a bam just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another no. one, another one that I love and I saw this in a, on a on a Doom video. Is, and this is my last my last favorite one. I don't get it often, but there's this glory kill with the Mancubus where you get to like his right side and like you get right up to his face and before he can react, he looks at you and it looks like he's fucking scared. Oh, shit. I know that like, one. I yeah. Up, and you stab him right in the head and, like for a split second. He just, he, he, his eyes just widen like, fuck! <laughs> well, that's actually, see, that's actually one of the reasons why this new Mancubus grew on me is because with the eyes and the mouth, it actually has, like, yeah. an expression now. It's a character now, yeah. you know? Um, like, even if, sorry, um, even when you go to the menu and you look at the, your different demons on the podiums, if you look at the Mancubus' mm -hmm. idol animation, he just kind of, like, like flexes his jaw around and that just adds to just that beefy beast character that he yep. is and that's um what's the name of the game's director again um yeah hugo martin hugo martin he mentioned this himself how in a way all these demons are just violent disney characters with their own <laughs> <vi> <laughs> with their own visual personalities 
<laughs> and that's funny because I remember he said that with the pain elemental, how how he described an old the man. The, he, yeah, he's an old grumpy man. That's yeah. that's his that's his personality. And I love that. Like, I mean, these are fucking creatures that you're supposed to hate, you know, and you're supposed to like kill them and shit. But like, I love how they all have their own personality. How the, how they all have their own like ways of thinking and stuff. Um, um, especially with like that old man thing with the pain element, though, because they describe yeah. how like he gets he 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 produces lost souls within his gut and it hurts so bad. Yeah, that's so, brutal. If I was a fucking pain element, so I would also act like a grumpy old man. Yeah. Because I'm um, having to, like, produce these things inside my gut, and it's like that. Yeah, I, true. I can see why he's like that. Yeah, it's <laughs> cursed to forge them constantly. Um, and yeah, the only way it, the only way it re has any reprieve is by making others suffer. Now, yep. again, one of my favorite demons in this game is the Archvial for both lore and personality. You look at him, and he looks like like an evil genius oh, in a yeah. way. In a yeah, way, he's, he's kind of the uh, he's kind of the demon aristocrat in a way. Um, he's actually a he's a demon lord, an elder demon, um, or at least from the elder line. And his psychomancy powers allow him to command hordes. So I just think that's so cool. Yeah. The thing about oh, yeah. Doom in its enemy design is just how different it makes every every enemy from each other. Its the, its design philosophy has actually been very impactful just on the way I have a creative process. I have like a lot of uh, projects I'm working on, which I'd like to eventually either publish as comic books or make an animated series. And when I'm designing minions. I look to the philosophy of Doom. Same here. I think to myself, make these guys so different from each other. You can tell exactly what they do and how they work together just by looking at all of them at once. Um. Now, um, I know I'm. Whew, I just um, I almost sneezed. <laughs> thing I need to mention about the the demons, which is an important element. Uh, that we haven't covered yet, and that is the destructible bodies that they have. Yeah! Oh, I love yeah. how you can, like, blow, literally blow chunks of flesh off of some of these demons. There were a couple demons like that in 2016 with the Mancubus' stomach, but they definitely brought that to all of them now. Um, yeah. Now, look, I know I'm I'm praising the fuck out of the arch file here, um... But he's actually the demon that scares me the most, because I'll be playing in an arena, and then I see, like, a red pinky in the corner of my eye, I'm like, oh shit, gotta find him! Yeah. <laughs> I gotta find him! <laughs> I remember the first time I encountered the art file, I thought that there was a, um, a buff totem somewhere around there. And I was like, oh <laughs> shit, you know, he's powered up demons. And then I see him for the first time, and I have all these flashbacks from Doom 1 and and I'm like, it's the arch vial. <laughs> See, um, now, sorry, go ahead. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but that's kind of where I want to uh, add a little bit of something. I'm now, I understand that, like, the Doom community, they're very particular about how they want their Doom to be, and you know, like, this this will go into like, you know, a little bit of thing, but this will this will go to the, de the demons as well. Yeah. Um. There's barely okay, so there are cutscenes in this game, and they're fucking badass, and they're really really cool. Um, but I think what really sucks, and I'm really sad to see it go, is the enemy introductions. Yeah, like just, I'm just, not the only one. Okay, true. yeah, yeah. The, the the quick. I mean, it doesn't bother me so much. Oh, this much, actually. But like you know that that scene from the original quick. QuakeCon trailer from like two years ago where the, you first meet the Archvile. For the yeah, very what happened first to those? Time. Uh, even uh, the Arachnatron, they're, too. They're still in the game's code, but like they were only used for trailers. They were not. And I, and I guess the mentality, the why they're not in the game is because of the fact that like because so many people have been watching so much gameplay and, and you already know how these demons work and how they act that they just decide not to put them in. But at the same time, it's like. I still want to see these new de like probably not you don't have to introduce like the 
the the demons that we already know from 2016, but at least maybe the the newer yeah. ones, like the Arachnotron. Like whatnot. remember, I think that would have been really cool. I remember in that gameplay show when the Arachnotron was like crawling down the pillar and then roared at you. You know? Yeah. Um. Now I actually really hate the alternative of what they did here, and it's you'll just walk in the room and then all of a sudden. Pop! Here's how you beat a cyber mancubus. Shoot its guns off. It's yeah. like, dude, yeah, no. let me figure it out. Yeah, it's, it's I think... It's very annoying. Uh, I know I you think... can turn them off, but yeah. I kind of felt like I would miss something important that I wouldn't quite get. You, you uh, would. You, you would. It's like, yep. let me... F this is, yeah. This is why they, they, they... Back in the day, all this information they're giving you in the pop-ups would have been in something what we used to call a manual... Yep, <laughs> I remember that. Oh, and shit. it would come with the game in a little sleeve, and you'd open it. And uh, when you weren't playing the game, you could read through it and see what how these different enemies acted, how your weapons worked, and you could read about the game. That way, when you actually played the game, it was more immersive. There was no immersion-breaking pop-up menus where they try to explain yeah. all these things. They did it with the bosses, um, too. Yeah, yeah. true. Sorry? Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I may rejoin you guys later. However, there are no promises here. So. All right, man. If uh, back, out, man. uh goodbye. Bro. Okay, Peace. man. Hey, bye. Perfecto. Glad to have yeah. you. All right. Then there um, were four. Um. But yeah, no. Um, like, uh, what, what were we talking about again? Uh, we're, we're talking about online. the tutorials just popping up oh, okay. for demons. So here's one thing that also kind because of, like, you know. I think that the like there are tutorials that you do need to learn. Like there are things that you do need to know what to do, but like not for the enemies and the bosses. <laughs> like you know, like yeah. I get it, you know, but at the same time, I really felt like it. Like because you know, it knows that they're making a really fucking crazy game here, and they want to make sure that everyone can be eased into it really easily. And I understand. I think it would have been a good idea because they give you a lot of options to turn shit off. I think would have been a really good idea is like if they allowed you to turn off specific tutorials, yeah. like enemy yeah. tutorials and boss tutorials. I think that would have been a good thing to do. Um, but here's another thing too that really kind of makes me sad because the tutorials kind of ruin it. So, and, and again, I'm going to go to go back to this game because um, so this game has the codex entries, right? Yeah. And if you take the time to find the entries for the demons, you can actually read up on the demons and see. Like, I didn't know yeah. you could you could insta-kill the pinky until I actually went into the codex and read it. The game doesn't tell you that, but the codex does. Yeah, like... And I was like, whoa, that's fucking cool. But And you know what's funny? There's another game that does the exact same thing where you can find secret ways to kill enemies way more efficiently by reading their enemy files, and it's the very first Devil May Cry game. When you let enemies, like, do certain attacks and stuff, you find out new files that yeah. unlock for that like, demon. Wouldn't it be cool if... Yeah, Metroid Prime had that, too. Exactly, yes. yeah. yeah. Metroid Prime um, had that as well. Like, okay, here's a... Uh... Um, I don't know if this would work perfectly, but here's just a little thought experiment here. What, first off, you know, have the demon introductions like you mentioned with the cutscenes. So you go yeah. in, you fight the demon, you kill the demon, then you get your codex entry. Yep. But if you kill a demon or at least attack it with one of its certain weaknesses, then it updates the codex to tell you, hey, this is a, a weakness of it. Yeah. So you learn through your action. You, know? you learn through your actions and whatnot. You know, it's as um, Hugo Martin said, we're okay with frustrating you as long as there's something to learn. Exactly, yeah. But I think, like, you know, and, and I really agree with Hugo's sentiment and whatnot, because I, I really, I really, like, he, he he's really an inspiring game developer. But, like, I think that whole tutorial thing telling you how those demons, how you can weaken them, kind of takes away... Like, I think what would have been nice is just, like, Instead of telling you how to to do it, it just said, "Hey, you can if you try and look with, with different weapons, you can actually take out certain parts of their body or some of their weapons and whatnot." Like the Erectatron, I can understand, you know, like, "Hey, do this," but we won't tell you it for the other demons. Though. We'll only tell you for the Erectatron to kind of tell you, "Hey, there's weak points," and whatnot, and then just kind of leave it like that. Like, go, you fight all the other enemies that have other points and just do like don't say anything don't pop up you know yeah. Yeah. You wanna... most, games, most games don't actually do that for every single demon like this game yeah. does they only do that for bosses 
like, yeah. oh, this is how you need to take down the Icon of Sin. Do this, yeah. this, and this. And I really felt like that kind of... I think personally for me as well, who's someone who's really challenged, uh, that kind of that kind of ruined the the fight in, in in a way. I think the only the only fight I think it it it, it mattered was the gladiator fight because you do have to fight him in a particular way. Um, but at the same time, it's like you know let let me figure it out. You know, like I know you could have turned the tutorials off, but like the problem with that is that like you never know when the tutorials are going to pop up. And there are some tutorials, like, if you're playing it brand new, it, or even if you're used to 2016, there's still some shit that you need to, to learn in this game and how to do it. So that's why I think would have been a good idea is you could have the ability to turn off specific tutorials. Like, you could have, like, all tutorials on, only uh, mechanic tutorials, only demon tutorials, only boss tutorials. Like, you know, you could turn individual stuff off. I think that would have been a, a, a good choice, honestly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, the Doom Hunter, which is the first boss of the game, um, it actually um, it has a, a boss trait that I've I've never been in support of. Um, I don't think it's mm -hmm. a I don't think it's objectively bad. This is this is just a personal thing for me. Um, I've never appreciated it when a boss becomes a common enemy. Um, yeah, I, I'm not too crazy about that because like sometimes it's like oh shit that actually makes it more threatening. But at the same time, it because uh, because I, I will say this like sometimes I, I do like that, but other times it's like then that actually kind of degrades that it actual di boss fight. Exactly, it diminishes the uniqueness of that experience. You no longer yeah. have to go and experience that cool boss fight because it's just a minion now. Yeah, it's just an enemy that you're gonna your fight. You yeah, know, like later down the line, which, like I said, I don't usually have that much problem with because some games do that, and sometimes it actually kind of adds tension to the game. Like, oh fuck, I'm fighting this guy again! Holy shit! But yeah. at the same time, it's like you know, I think it would have been a, a better idea if the first boss was because, like, when they were showing off the Doom Hunter at first or like talking about him, they were kind of making him sound like a nemesis type yeah. enemy where he chases you through these uh, these areas. And you fight him off. Because you know what I fucking would have loved? If the Doom Hunter was like this. Came at random. He, he came at random. And he he acted like a mini boss. And uh, what would have been so fucking cool. Is you would, you would beat the shit out of him. And he would run away. And then at the like near end of the game. You fight him one last time. See, I was like super fucking buffed up and then that's like his fight see i was that actually um, fucking awesome i was hoping that our other super weaponized buddy was going to be like that but again i'll get to him um mm -hmm. mm, uh I, prowler i actually I no sorry yeah i got i got no problem with uh you know you get introduced to a a stronger demon than you're used to for the first time and they introduce him as a boss and then he's part of the regular horde of demons that you fight, as long as the the regular demon that you're fighting there uh, is just has just general susceptibilities. You know, you shoot him with a machine gun, he takes damage. You shoot him with a rocket, he gets his arm blown off. The yeah. issue yeah. I have is, like, if, for example, our friend that starts with an M that we will get to, <laughs> right? But when they, have, when, they, when they still retain their boss mechanics... Where there's only certain ways you can attack them and hurt them, mm -hmm. that that's where I have an issue. As long as it's mm. still part of just a regular demon that I can just throw some, shoot some rounds at, and he takes damage. As long as he, he goes down like every other demon, I don't care if he's in the mix. It just adds more variety. It's only when he has very unique, specific ways you have to take him out. Then it comes handy. Well, I think you know, cause like I understand where you're coming from, but you know. Because we'll 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 get to that uh, fully, <laughs> but I think I think if he was just another demon that you could you know just shoot until it dies, I think it kind of would degrade the overall thinking process of the game that the game is trying to teach you how to do. And we'll get more into that later, um, um, because you know uh, the mar the not the Marauder, my bad, my the the Doom Hunter. You still have to fight him like he's the normal boss fight. Uh, and there's another area in Necrovol Part 1, I think, where you do have to fight two of them again. Uh, but they're generally weaker, you know, like, uh, because... Yeah, I've noticed I found, that. I, I found out that, like, you can uh, freeze a Doom Hunter and blood punch him twice, and you'll get him off of his uh, 
like his machine so that way he doesn't have a shield but in the boss fight version you can't do that um they're generally like stronger uh, i'm and sorry stuff. sorry is shades master still here no, no? he's gone <laughs> maybe he fell yeah, asleep again be... Hold on, it darks a little bit to beat the boss. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Like, you know, back to the boss thing, like, you know, like, what, te what uh, Tara says, like, you know, if Dark Souls told you how to beat the bosses, it would literally defeat the entire purpose of what the game is trying to go for, you know? Yeah. Like, you, in order to understand the boss, like in Dark Souls or Bloodborne, you have to die. Like, you, you have mm -hmm. to... And it's the same thing with, like, one of my favorite series, Devil May Cry, where, like, the first boss in the first game, you will never beat him your first try. And the reason why is because the game is trying to kick your ass so that way you can learn how to do it. And in order for you to learn, you have to you you have to fail. Um, because you can't just go in and win all the time. You, you can't just like win, 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 win all the time. And the reason why is because if you're winning all the time, then your whole experience would just be way too easy. Everything would just be so simple. So when you have like a boss and the game doesn't tell you how to fight it, you know, yeah, it'll probably be a grueling process, but like you're doing it to understand so that way when you play it later, you have the upper hand in that fight. Because you're not supposed to understand how you fight him the first time. The same thing with like we'll get to him, the Marauder, you know, because I know a lot of people really hate him. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of one of the reasons why the combat in Eternal is so important is because they're trying to get you to get out of your comfort zone of just shoot until it dies. Like, I love shooting everything until they die, but I like it more when I'm able to, I have to think how to shoot until it dies. How it, Here's you, what I would say to that is there should be way, there should be more effective ways and less effective ways of taking down an enemy, but all enemies should succumb to bullets. <laughs> That's my general well, feeling. Yes, but the, the, and we'll get to it, but I understand the sentiment, but once we get to the Marauder, I'll 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 go more in depth um, about my whole thing. Now, one thing I actually um I appreciated was um the return of the Prowler. Although it does kind of make me wish they brought the the Harvester too. Yeah, to replace the Summoner Demon. Ma maybe make him. <laughs> well, maybe the Harvester could have been like a vampire demon where he starts stealing your health for his own attacks or something. Oh, because that was and, the like, whole get point. To the demons and shit. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point of the harvester. I'll be right back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that makes right. two of us for now. Um, so they kind of changed the prowler. You know, he was originally a demon. He was kind of like the hunter from Left 4 Dead, where he pounced around and then you and know he would like, fly up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they turned him into a teleporter, which works. He's kind of he's kind of a super imp now. He pretty much is a super amp, yeah. That's you, you know, you know the way I look at it, because uh, I, I just started playing um, Doom sixty four, like a, a, you know, a, when the game came out, Doom Eternal came out. Uh, the Doom Doom sixty four has a variant of the imp called the Nightmare Imp. I saw uh, that. The, the Nightmare Imps have purple skin and they shoot purple projectiles and they can go invisible, I believe. Um, and I believe that the Prowler is basically what is basically the iteration of the Nightmare Imp um, from Doom 64. Might be. Uh, and I, I really do like I, I love the Prowlers. I think they're they really kind of like freak you out and they really kind of make you go, oh, shit. Like, where, where is he going to come from this time? They're a welcome um, addition to me. They are a welcome addition. I really do enjoy the Prowlers. I don't think they are, you know. I, I do I think they're fucking implemented perfectly. I really enjoy yeah. them a lot. Yeah, I really do. Well, because like it, it kind of gives you that. The, I I love the the idea of like one enemy type, but there's different like tiers of them. You know, like some people could probably find that lazy, but like I actually really like that in, in games sometimes because like you're you're dealing with like fodder types of this of like one species, but then like you find you fight like the other type, like the the Hell Knight and the Baron of Hell. They're technically the same species. They technically have the same attacks, but one of them is, like, way more fucking terrifying and way more, like, aggressive towards you than the other one is uh, and whatnot. So it's yeah. like you have to, like, oh, shit, like, this guy's no joke. Actually, like, that's... The other one... <laughs> Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, it's okay. Um, I'm back. Oh, welcome back. Hey. Um, one thing I thought was very funny <laughs> is you look at all these classic demons and they're like you know we're going back to the the doom 2 style we're giving them the old school 
look, we're bringing you right at home. Yep. Except for the Baron of Hell, we're turning him into a fucking monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is a... He, you know, I mean, they, like, after personal experience and playing the game as much as I have played, I will definitely say that he is a lot more of a threat than he used to be, because in yeah. 2016, he is not a threat at all. No. He is, he is so easy to take down. He's not scary. What's a, he's only scary when you're playing Snap Map and you have 12 of them <laughs> running at you. I mean, they made him more melee than projectile <laughs> this time around. They um, did, yeah, and I think that was a good. I think that was a good idea, honestly. Now, now I knew that they were going to have. Um... I, I walked away when you guys were starting to talk about the Prowler. I only have one thing to mention about the Prowler. Um, oh yeah, no, what's up? And that's that it. It always he always throws throws me through a loop because he seems like somebody I should take out with a chainsaw, but I yeah. can't. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. I've so, done like, a I couple. Do, I do a chainsaw him like he's an imp or something, and then he just hits. <laughs> well, the thing of <laughs> yeah. The thing about the Prowler is that it's a heavy demon, so you need kind of like those two tanks to do it, I think. Or was it three tanks? Yeah, you, I think it was you, two you tanks. Need, yeah. No, it's it's three, because you, you, you can't chainsaw heavy demons with two pips in the, uh, oh, okay. the chainsaw, which I, I do kind of hate. I'm yeah. not going to lie. <laughs> but um, it's okay. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, there is, there's actually um a lot of variants of imps in this game, as well as hell knights. For the imps, there's the imp itself, which, by the way, I love the design upgrade. Uh, they kept yeah. the same one, but they made it more classic and somehow more menacing at the same time. Um, yeah. And then you have... Well, it's suggested that the Prowler might be a, like a distant form of imp. Um, yeah. I still consider him an imp variant, yeah. even if he is not the same species, but he, he definitely acts like an imp. An imp variant, basically. And then, it really does. It crossbred with the Hell Knight, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then the other form of imp is the gargoyle. Oh, yeah, the gargoyles, yep. It's kind of a cute little buddy, to be honest. Um, they, you know, on harder difficulties, I find that they're the most dangerous fodder enemy in the entire oh, game. Really? Because they're super, they're super mobile. They can fly, so like shooting them can be a little bit of a bastard. Especially if you're trying to like, uh, when you're going super fast, you know, like not all the time are they really, really difficult to like lock onto. But they're very fast. They shoot a ton of projectiles at you really quickly, and they do a lot of damage if you're on higher difficulties. Um, and that, and the fact that they fly and they move so much like when i'm trying to like do a precision shot on them it's really difficult to like land that shot because of how fast he's moving um i would say they are the most dangerous fodder enemy type okay um, out of the bunch yeah now funny enough um i now because i got the uh, the doom eternal art book yesterday in from amazon um as i looked through it i found that they were actually very close to giving horns to the hell knight Really? Yeah, they almost did it. Oh, I would have loved it. I would have loved that. Um, and oh man, come to think of it, there's now um three to four variations of Hell Knight. We have the Hell Knight, the Dread Knight, yep. um, the Dread Knight, the Baron of Hell, and what we have in this game is the Fireborn Baron. Yep. Which um, of course, there is lore behind that, and they're like a special breed that evolved in like this Shadowlands type of thing. They're basically like the essence of hell. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Um, they actually. Doom. They the the Hell Knight and the Baron of Hell. Where they use the exact same sprite. They just colored him differently. Yeah, they colored yeah. him differently. Oh, but they did bring back the classic Hell Knight as a boss. They did. <laughs> yes, they really and I really love did that because it's like oh my god and uh, like in the so I would I also love too is that like. When you when I played like some of the battle mode levels, the the one hell one, yeah, uh, you could see the hell knight face, uh, like modernized on like some of the wall textures, I like... and it's like super cool. It's see, like, yes, the reason why that's cool now is because it now uh, it adds a new context to that that architecture design. It's not just a demon head on there. It's this is the gladiator being represented, you know, yep. on surfaces and stuff now. Yeah, and I really, I really, uh, I really enjoyed. There, there's a lot of fan service in this. Like, there, there's a lot of fucking really good, like, things that a lot of classic Doom fans are gonna really love. Especially like, you know, because I didn't get into Doom until 2000, like, like fully into Doom until 2013. And as someone who has not been in it since like someone from like 1993, uh, for me, it's fucking. I love it. 
because I love classic Doom. I, I I really do. And seeing all these like little cool things here and there, it just it gushes to me like of nostalgia. I'm like, oh, I love this so much. So good. Even though I'm not like back back in the day, I wasn't a fan of it back then. But I oh god, I love it now. Honestly, now, funny enough. My least favorite boss in this game is none other than our main villainess, the Con Maker. Um, what was that? Uh, my least favorite boss in this game is the Con Maker. Um, uh, and uh, I don't, yeah. I don't think I she's. I she was just too easy. Well, see, I don't think she was really designed bad. I just, I don't like no. that she. She doesn't have any phases, you know. It's just kind of do the same thing over and over again until she's dead. That's actually a very fair point. I actually really enjoyed her fight. I thought her fight was a, was a good representation of having to be aware of your surroundings. And yeah, that was good. Be moving. I really enjoyed her fight, but I will have to agree that like uh, it was one of those fights where like you have to do it. You have to do, like rinse and repeat six times. But like it would have been because she's she's basically God. Yeah, in, in, in <laughs> you kill you know? God in Doom Eternal. You kill God in Doom basically. <laughs> kind of, and, unless you count the Father. But yeah, you, know. you know, like yeah, unless you count the Father. But like you, you basically kill uh, like God, and it's like you know, I would have expected if she got into like the third, like if you hit her the third time, like that's when like she'd really just start going fucking haywire she'd be sending like two lasers down from the heavens on after you and stuff uh she'd yeah. be doing so much more crazy shit like her wings would probably like get bigger or turn red uh and whatnot signifying that she's like way angry basically critical mass you know what i mean yeah exactly <laughs> um you know um but they don't do that and that doesn't bother me i do like like i said i do really enjoy her fight i think she is probably my my second favorite fight but at the same time, I do feel like, uh, you know, they could have done a little bit more with, like, a second phase with her. See, for Especially me... Went since, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's okay, that's okay. See, I pretty much my, my point. My favorite bosses were actually... Uh, it was, of course, the Icon of Sin. Um, oh, yeah. But it was actually also the Gladiator, because it felt like... I'm a big fan of traditional boss fights where you have to learn the moves of the enemy, you know? Yeah. Like, for example, um, in the second phase, he does kind of that weird thing where he waves his maces and you have to dodge the skipping rope or whatever. Like, it's a little yeah. silly. It's a little silly, but, you know, it works as a boss mechanic, you know? Yeah. And it reminded me a lot of, uh, actually very much, of the uh, the Balgar, which was the 2016 Cyber Demon, when he brought the walls up and you had to dodge yeah. his, his fire blade. Yep. Um, I really like I really like those classic traditional boss fights as well because like you know say what you will about the Doom 2016 boss fights because they are easy as shit uh, but like I think their mechanics the way they did them were so it was such a nod to classic like early 2000s late 90s boss fights uh, where you kind of have to like uh, do a certain little thing and, and they, they do particular types of mechanics and you have to like move in certain ways or you know, like Zelda bosses where you like you have to shoot them and then you can go in for the fight. I really, really, really enjoyed the design philosophy of the that's why I, I really love the twenty sixteen bosses. They just weren't hard enough. Yeah. They weren't they weren't difficult enough. In my um and that's kind of their downfall. Personally but, I but, actually but design wise they were awesome yeah like they were really well fought bosses but they Pers just weren't hard yeah personally i actually preferred the 2016 bosses even though there were less and they were all at the end of the game kind of yeah because like you know after after playing doom i can't really put my finger on a boss that i i love the most like i did say like the con maker is like my second favorite fight but like the the bosses in eternal fell i mean they were definitely well better designed not but they just kind of felt, um, how do I explain it? Like, I, I don't know how to put my finger on it, to be honest with you, but they just didn't feel as memorable, at least uh, at least to me, as, as the bosses from 2016. That's just yeah. me, though. I kind of uh, felt that I'm, way. Yeah, like, they, it, it didn't really make me want to go back and fight those bosses well, again. That's kind of that what brings, it was. That brings up, again, you know, the bosses being turned into minions in some of them. Um, yeah. I feel like just kind of added to that, at least for the first one, and maybe if you count the second one, I don't know. 
He's a bit of a debate. Oh, uh, uh, no, I don't really count the Marauder as a boss. I don't, I don't either. I noticed a lot of people do. Um, yeah. But it's like, until I see that health bar up there, he's not a boss to me, you know? Yeah. Um... Man, there, there I do are like so that the Mara I, I do like that the Doom Hunter though though is like a, a consistent threat because I do I do like the way he fights even if they do reuse. Here's him. a cool one. I do like his mechanics. Um, I do really like his. So like whenever he shows up, I'm like, ooh ooh, I like this boss. I like this fight. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I think uh, I, I would say even though it's funny because the Icon of Sin fight. You're spending more time dodging and weaving and killing demons than you are actually shooting the icon. But I, I would say that's actually pretty accurate to the actual boss from the original Doom 2 uh, as well. Yeah. Because that was pretty much exactly what you were doing in the original game. Is that you had this big giant wall that was shooting out little spawners that spawned demons and stuff. And you had to focus on them and getting up to the platform to... Uh, raise the or lower the platform so you can get onto it and shoot the rocket into his head, and that's kind of what goes on in this game because like they give you like infinite crucible ammo at that last section, which is fucking awesome. Like you know, no better better way to use it, you know. Yeah. But you just feel yeah. you feel so fucking badass, um, you know. And I and I genuinely do like the Icon of Sin fight, even though it's, even if you are focusing on the enemies uh, more than you are the fight itself. But I also I think it's really, fitting. Yeah, I think it fits, you know. And if, if they're going for like, you know, accuracy, they did a they did a good job with uh, modernizing the uh, the Icon of Sin fight. Even think... if it's not like exactly what most people would probably want in it to be, like a one on one with a big giant monster. But I think it fits. I think uh, it the works game. because it's a giant monster. You know, you don't have to yeah. go to its location to hit it. You know. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to do something specific. You literally just... I mean, you kind of have to do something specific. You have to shoot, like, the particular parts on his body. But it's still the shoot it until it dies yeah. type deal. You just have to, like, focus on particular parts of his body. Yeah, and whatnot. exactly. I don't know if you ever noticed this, but it looks to me like... Um, almost like the, the Icon of Sin has actual goat eyes. Yeah. Um, so that confirms that the Icon of Sin is J.R. Crash. <laughs> yeah. The mountain goat. <laughs> I do have an issue with some of the mountain goat opportunity. I mean, it's for, for as much as this is parkour platforming type of map or like type of a uh, type of map, like I'm reviewing this map, uh, type of game. Uh, there's uh -huh. actually a shit ton of invisible walls, and I kept getting stuck on. Them. Like yeah. any, anytime I try to go mountain goading, they really don't like it when you do that in this game. <laughs> they they oh, really they really oh, try to keep doing that. Oh. Uh, can I also add something really quick? Yep. Uh, did you guys know that fucking within 24 hours, someone already found a way to beat the game in 30 minutes? <laughs> what? Are you serious? I'm fucking serious. Yeah, okay. So oh, wait a minute. I tried, it, I tried it on console. It is possible on console because I was doing it, but it's it's way more uh, it's way more uh, possible on, on uh, PC. But the thing is, you need a mouse that uh has free movement like like you know like a little wheel how when like you, you flick it and whatnot you need a mouse that loosens it up so when you flick it once it's like a dreidel how it just fucking keeps spinning and stuff because you can try this on your console and it works you just have to have a really good button mashing finger uh or thumb what you do is you look down on a ledge and you hold the the weapon wheel button to go slow motion and you slightly move until you start like falling off the ledge and you spam the fucking jump button <laughs> and the slayer just starts flying upwards like all the way and i was doing it on i was doing it on our complex and i was able to skip most areas with it um oh. and on on pc if you have that little uh, mouse that does that uh you can skip almost entire levels completely. i know um i know jared crash was doing a bit of mountain go goading on terrace nabad on youtube Oh god. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's kinda cool. Yeah, I was able to to, to, to mountain goat up onto some buildings, but I couldn't I I couldn't completely jump out of the map. They, they, I, they did actually, I actually know a, an area you can get out of the map in Sentinel Prime. Uh someone I met on Battle Mode to, to, told me this. Uh when you go in okay, you know where you find did any of you find like the first one up? Uh, in that in that level at all, where there's a switch and it opens up a door in front of you that you jump to, 
and, and whatnot. Any, any of you know that at all? Uh, uh, I think, I think I might have found it, but I don't. I don't remember. Specifically. So if you find it's the it's like the very first like uh, one up in the level. Uh, if you just jump to the door that opens and just keep spamming X, the Doom Slayer will just like climb up the door, and you'll be able to just walk out into the like outside of the map completely. Oh. And it is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh. Um. So I actually had to pull up the the enemy list because there's just so many enemies. <laughs> um. Probably the goofiest enemy in this game. It's an ambient one, and it's the cue ball. Which is kind I of the, love the cue ball. <laughs> it's kind of the remake of the engineer from the previous game. They're yeah. just uh, they're just not as um aggr- well no they're not aggressive. They no, they just stand ball. there. They just stand. Well, they're a fucking cue ball. You punch I, them and they go flying. <laughs> see, I actually kind of wish that they still had the mechanic of the engineer where they'd come after you running and try to explode. But then yeah, I think it'd be I, cool I, if you I, shot them and then they flew off like they do now. You know, kind of combine the two. I also like how in some areas, like, where demons spawn, they have, like, two of them set up, and, like, <laughs> yeah. they're set up to specific demons, you know that you have to punch them. Like, there's that room in Cultist Base where there's two of them outside, where you have to do, like, that puzzle where you go down, shoot the thing to make the pillar go up. Um, there's, like, yeah. a revenant that spawns, and you walk up to the cue ball, punch him, you hit the revenant, and then the mancubus spawns, you jump up on the platform, punch them, and it kills the mancubus instantly, and it's like, that feels fucking great. Yeah, that's really cool enemy placement. I really like the way they did that. Now they actually changed the lore for two of the demons in this game, like completely, just like re rewrote it. Um, really? Yeah, it's the Lost Soul and the Specter. So yeah. in 2016, the Lost Soul was a very like a very low tier demon, and it would ram into beings to kick their soul out and possess them. That was what it was. Um, in this, in 2016, I mean, in uh, Doom Eternal, um, it's described as the corrupted souls that escaped the, the siphon or whatever the machine was. Um, oh, okay. And the specter in 2016 was um, a pinky experimented on with a cacodemon eye and it gained the ability to cloak. Um, in mm. in Doom Eternal, it's rewritten as a a creation from uh, from demon from demon sorcerers in hell. I think um, the way you could explain both of them being canon, even if they do change it, is I can see how to connect them to be canon. Still, is that in Eternal it says that they were like corrupted souls that escaped the siphon. And then you could add in like they they go and they look for for things to commit Possess. suicide. Yeah, yes. that's and then with the specter, it's easy, it's super easy to describe it as the sorcerer found a way to make pinkies invisible, and the UAC found a scientific way to make them invisible by using. So there's like there's two strains then. There's two there's yeah. two ways of doing it. Like they're like you know yeah there as well as as well as that you know uh, I mean you know rec retcons are a little bit in this game. Uh, you know, especially with those two demons, but like the way I see it is like uh, because there's multiple ways to you, you can use substitutes. You know, like substitutes exist in the real world to do the same effect of a certain thing. You know, and that's the way I see with like that specter. Like sorcerers did it, and then the UAC cultists found that you could do it with a caco demon eye and stuff. Yeah, they use that substitute. You know. Yeah. Um, well, one thing I like about uh, this game is that uh, there's there's fewer lost souls than <laughs> <laughs> you know as much as I so do. They're, they're almost there. Bargaining. Someday I hope to get to the point where there's there's zero. <laughs> I actually like that they're <laughs> not as loud like this time. I do like that too. They're not as loud. I you know as much as I do have to agree with with Crash, I am kind of sad that they were only exclusively used for the pan elemental. Yeah, like, I've noticed I that. I love. I loved opening those things only to be fucking like, just like oh shit, lost soul. <laughs> True. You know, because like as much as much as annoying as that is, you know, um, I love little things like that, even if they are annoying because they catch you off guard. And I think if the game is not catching you off guard like that, then it's not as exciting, in my honest opinion. But I still hate them. Everyone hates them. <laughs> I fucking hate lost souls. But I am kind of sad that they. They were a little underutilized, and they were only exclusively utilized for pain elementals. I am kind of sad that they were. 
Um, because you you rarely fucking fight them now. And to me that that, that was a little sad. We've um, you know. we've fought lost souls. We've uh, fought uh, um, tyrants. We fought heaven itself. But the true evil is none other than the ambient demon known as hentai. Is it the tentacle? Yeah. Oh, tentacles. <laughs> Did you know you can chainsaw those things? Yep, I've done it. They scream. Yeah, I, I found out. I found that out like like a week ago, a week or two ago, and I was like, "What? You can fucking do that?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I guess you're kind of like a little whack a mole game. Yeah. Um, uh. I did find they, out. They're basically just traps. Like yeah. in any other game, it would have just been like a like a trap that you know. Actually, I. I don't know. I don't really care for them, but they don't make me angry. Yeah. They just kind of... They're nothing special. I mean, I think would have been a good idea, because I've noticed that every time you fight them through the same levels over and over again, they always spawn in the the same holes. They never change holes. I kind of think that was a bit of a missed opportunity to make it to where every time you run through those tentacle rooms, it's random which one they come from. Um, I think... It would have been nice if they would have done than that with regular demons spawning because like they'll ha- they'll have it so that uh, a caca demon will literally spawn on top of your head. It, it doesn't yeah. matter where you are in the in the map. Demons spawn where they're programmed to spawn. Unfortunately, it'd be nice if they would have mixed it up a little bit more. That's pretty much the that's for the master levels at this point, uh, honestly. Um, but I do, yeah. you know, because I mean, with that being said, you know, like most games will do that. They won't really randomize it. And uh, but like I think that's kind of the master level's job to kind of like change the way the demons spawn, where they spawn, and how like which tiers of them do. Because like you know, I understand. I, I definitely get that. Because like you know, I've played 2016 campaign more times than I can honestly count, and like I know the enemy placement so much that it's become really easy. This game, however, even though I am like way better than I was when I just started playing it, like I can fucking get through these levels with ease on nightmare, but. I think this game really kind of gives oh, you more. Oh, welcome of back, Perfectus. Hey, Perfectus. Hello, hello. Um, we're on what, the topic uh, of demons still. I think we were on the topic of demons when he left. We yeah, really we were. This topic. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> oh, There's a lot of demons. demons. Okay, yeah. Have we talked about the Marauder yet? Nope, we're not there no. yet. No. He's a, he's our special boy. We're gonna talk yeah, about him so after. I, I cannot wait to talk about him because I, <laughs> I, I love the Marauder. I, I really do. No one agrees with me on that, but I do. Hey, I actually, hey, you're not I alone. You're not alone. You're not hey. alone. <laughs> I have some things to say about him, but you're not alone. You oh, do not need to I be alone anymore, like Justin. Um, <laughs> yeah, I felt like I was the only one who actually liked him. <laughs> no, no. The only thing that really matters about him is if he opened our eyes or not. <laughs> True. Um, now, um, I think we've we've been talking about a lot of the demons here. Um, one demon, I'm not a huge fan of him, but he's fun to glory kill, and it's... Uh, Carcass. Mis- yeah, Mr. Carcass. <laughs> yep. You mean water news from Monsters? <laughs> <laughs> Sullivan, oh, give me the child! Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, wow, I never thought of him as salt. That's fucking great. No, the carcass demon is an interesting motherfucker. He He's effective. He, he's, he's a he is. He's he does his job really well. Like <laughs> I mean he fucking puts those shields in front of Well it's funny because like I will say though, like I, I've I've gone to like really learn how he works and like I I love how Hugo was like, Yeah, if he ever is, if there's ever a carcass, never use the rocket launcher. I've done it. <laughs> I proceed to I proceed to use the rocket launcher like every single like what I do is I wait for him to put the shield down and then I fucking go ham on him. I like, think he's the, not gonna I stop me. Encountering a carcass, whenever rocket launcher ammo is the only thing I have available. Yeah. So I say fuck. Yeah, it's one of those moments where you have to kind of like, you kind of have to read the demons and you have to kind of like think about their cooldowns and whatnot because every demon has like their own special like ability that they do and like the carcass demon will put up put down a shield but he doesn't put it down a like he does put down a lot but like it, if there's like only if there's like two of them then that's when it kind of becomes a real big problem but when there's like only one especially with the fact that like if you get the plasma rifle and shoot that shield it will explode and do damage to demons around it um, yeah 
So it's like a double-edged sword. Like, it can hurt you, but it's also kind of useful to you, because if you have the plasma rifle equipped, you can use it to damage demons, or in fact, probably kill them, too, because it does a lot of damage um, if you blow it up. One of my fair glory no, kills... a lot of damage! <laughs> Um, one of my favorite, one of my favorite glory kills is um, when you stab his backpack and he grins and at he you. But, yeah, and then he spins yeah. around and explodes. Yeah, and that's golden. Like, yep. <laughs> um, what, what are some other really good glory kills? There is um, there's uh, there's one that I always yeah, hear, but yeah. I love stomping glory kills. Those are my yeah. absolute favorites. Yeah, <laughs> punching a zombie's head and. <laughs> The, the two best glory kills, in my honest opinion, I mean, these aren't my favorites, but these are, in my opinion, the best ones. Uh, the two best ones are, the first one is when uh, you glory kill the marauder, and you go in for a punch, but he, he, he grabs your fist to stop you, but then you use the, the blade to just go right through his head. Oh yes, when he goes down fighting. Yeah, and then the arch file does the same thing where he'll 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 use his hand to try to punch you, but you'll grab it, and he he gets like this scared look on his face, and then you just go in and stab <laughs> right through his like chin. And he's just like mm. true. His, his lips like go upwards with him, and he's like. Mm. <laughs> like that. There's one when you turn out that always makes me laugh, and that's the uh, cacodemon. Yeah, because. When you when you pull out his eye, they have that sound of they have that sound effect for pulling out his eye. That's just really comical. Where it's like, <laughs> true. <laughs> it's the like I, I, the it's a little demon, over the is, top, but I always get a um, laugh. The Caco Demon glory kill isn't the best thing ever. It's when he swallows the dang grenade. Oh, that's yeah. great. Um, yeah. It um. Funny thing that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb for me. Again, that would have been the kind of thing where I think it would have been cooler to learn that on your own. Um, yeah, they had to explain it to you, which is annoying. Yeah. Um, but another glory kill that I really like is the whiplash. Just how, like, you, you take out your knife and you just chop them up like sushi in midair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sushi. It's like, oh my lord. Um... It's great. One demon. My favorite one with with her is where you grab her by the the horn in the back, and like you got her like back, and then you take your your uh, your blade and just, just stab it right through his through her brain, up her mouth. Oh god, yeah. that shit's so fucking satisfying. It's like yes, get fucked. Now one thing well, that the decapitation one. Oh, yeah, that one's weird. You, mm -hmm. Yeah, because you, you don't you don't you don't <laughs> cut her head off. You just slice her neck, and it's like. Ugh. Um, one of the one of the glory kills that makes me um, wince just a little is actually the um, when you slit the throat of the uh, Baron of Hell, and I see him fucking grab his throat. And I'm like, ugh! I almost felt uh, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The the neck. The best Baron of Hell kills will always be when you rip off his horn and kill him with it. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's... Oh yeah. You just beat the shit out of him with his own uh, horn. One that I. One that I do like is when the archfile tries to go and grab the prize, but then you grab his hand and stab his head. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. Yeah, that one is so Actually, good. Actually, the Baron and the archvile, I believe those are the only two demons where when you shoot off their armor, they're glowing inside. Yeah, it's I believe they're, so. It's because they're both imbued with uh, the power of Hellfire as well. Yep. Lore-wise. Because the true beauty is inside. Exactly. Um, uh, what else do we got here? Am I missing any? Oh, actually, there was one, um, there was one demon that kind of surprised me. Not only because they, um, not only because uh, they didn't have a codex entry, but they were a little more powerful than I expected, and that's the Mecha Zombie. Oh, yeah. Are you looking, were... guys? Um... Mech yeah, the the zombies, but they have like the arm cannon, and they can they can shoot you, and they have the flamethrower on yeah. them and stuff. They are pieces of shit. Like you honestly. can underestimate <laughs> them pretty easily because they're zombies, but then they shoot that fucking flamethrower at you. The thing, the thing about the mecha zombies is what's deadly about them is that they throw them in with regular zombies, so yeah. that you think they're just regular zombies, and then they just start shooting at you. Yeah, yeah, I think mecha zombies are usually cause me a lot of problems. Um, they they are pieces of shit. Uh, they they can be bastards, honestly. Um, another thing. I thought it was interesting how they made the pinkies 
more buff in 20, yeah. in uh, 2020. Yeah. yeah. Yes. They sound more was, like pigs now. Yeah. They do. I was expecting like a oh, punk ass pinky. I'll, I'll just shoot you in the face with a shotgun, but they're actually pretty strong. <laughs> They are. They're yeah, way aggressive. more aggressive this time around. By the way, like, because I remember you when have to get behind them though. I, well, I, the other times yeah, it was cause optional. Yeah, because you, yeah, you have to get behind them unless you have a blood punch. You can kill them instantly. But no, they're way more fucking aggressive this time around. Like they attack faster. Like they, they're way more relentless. They're running. They're trying to ram you quicker. They are. They are genuinely like. Because I, I genuinely thought like, oh, they're they're gonna be like pushovers in this next game. No, they're they're problems like they especially if they get the buff totem on them like they run like twice as fast and you cannot outrun them whatever you do um and i've had multiple times at the last level where like the buff totem appears where the three tyrants appear and i have died like twice running to that buff totem and a specter comes from behind me and just <laughs> I actually like, like fuck. <laughs> I like the specters more in this game because they're not just ghostly spinkies anymore. Um, uh, like not only are they more cloaked, but they kind of have like the glowing eyes, and they're immune yep. to lock on weapons. Yeah, they're immune to lock on. You cannot you lock on burst. You cannot meet hook to them. Yep. So they're actually something a little more different than just another pinky this time. I would have loved to see a, a third variant of the pinky, though. <laughs> the, the the punky, the punk, the punk. <laughs> There's a big, I big think, beast. I think I think I think a third variant of the pinky would have been a would have been a nice touch, honestly. Um, like maybe give it like black armor, uh, and stuff. Um, yeah, and make it like make it bigger as well. Uh, that that would have been that would have been really really give nice, it like huge honestly. tusks. Yeah, huge fucking tusks <laughs> and whatnot. Um, so something I've always wanted to see now, now that we're talking about variants or something like that, mm -hmm. would be throwing something out there. Uh, something what I would call like a king imp. So something that would be more akin to a baron of hell or an archvile, where it's just a really, really buff imp. Oh, God. <laughs> I have the perfect name for it. Call it an ump. <laughs> I guess you could just call it a thump at that point. Um, actually, there is a demon in this game that we don't particularly fight. It is none other than the Titans. Oh, yeah, the, the, the Titans. I thought I was going to fight yeah. those guys when I first saw them. Um, they actually kind of disappointed me a little bit. Um, and I guess it's just because... I remember in um, the Slayer Testaments um, from 2016, it talked about, you know, the Titan and how you took it down. It was Hell's Champion. But now yeah. there's now there's a bunch of Titans. Not only is there a bunch of them, but they're basically just cattle. They are They're, cattle, <laughs> they're there yeah. to just be the bitches of the other demons. Pretty much, yeah. Um, I, think, I think the way you could explain that is by... One particular titan was like very special, and I believe he was probably like way bigger than than the one in um the the ones you see in in Eternal. Maybe. Um. But but yeah, you know, it, it's it's kind of funny to see. I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure all that is still canon and whatnot. You know, but it's also kind of weird because it's just like, well, then you have the Titan of Terrace Nabod that the Slayer defeated as yeah. well. Um. And uh, it's it's just, it's one of those things where. The lore, the expanded lore is great, but sometimes it's a little difficult trying to... Like, I'm not going to lie, I'm still kind of having trouble where to fit the Slayer Testament into the lore. Me too. Me introduced. too. Like, where does it fit? Um, and whatnot. That's um, going to be where my... That's where I'm going to start to tear the game in, in the, in the story section. <laughs> um, yeah, because it's just like, you know... Um, like, who made the pre? I mean, they say like, what the wretch made the Praetor suit, but who is the wretch? Like, is it? Is it? To be the honest, like, I mean, who is it? Oh, one of my, sorry, um, one of my main complaints, or not really a complaint, but a confusion that I had in 2016 was, why is this dude hanging around a bunch of um, like uh, medieval warriors and wearing this high tech suit? But, you know, yeah. now that we get, like, a better look at, like, maker technology and stuff, it makes a little more sense. It makes I mean, more sense, Except yeah. for one thing. I mean, I have the, um, I have the collector's edition, 
And yeah. right now I'm staring at my my Praetor helmet, and I'm seeing like little numbers everywhere. So it's the way like... I the way I think I can describe that is um, I I would say that because in like in 2016, because they found the suit mm. in, in a coffin, uh, they were doing so many testing on it. That's and they true. It. It's true. They that's... probably printed it on. I'm pretty sure that's oh, that's how that going to be. So, and like, especially with like his new armor, you know. I, yeah. Does the new armor have have number printing on it? I don't know at all. But if that's the case, I'm pretty sure that's Vegas doing. Actually, because I, I. Oh yeah. Now that you, now that you pointed that out, that makes so much sense. Yeah, I, I believe UAC I, I printing. Believe, yeah, I believe I believe it's because they they printed it on there because they were doing so many tests with it just to like test it out, mm -hmm. try to break it, and um, they uh, they printed stuff on it. That's the way I'd explain that. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yep. Uh, yeah, we actually have four different zombies in this game, or technically five. Oh yeah. Um, we have the zombie. We have the zombie scientist, which is really just a re well. So is the Hell Zombie. That those are both reskins, and then we have those the Mega Zombie. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry. Oh, um, are you, are you finished with your thoughts on zombies? Oh yeah. So, an enemy I feel like was cool, but they didn't expand upon it enough. Was the um, Maker Drones? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Enemies. But when... that's the only angelic enemies you get. Wouldn't See, it be cool to have something like a like angelic warrior? What about like the Maker some, Angels? Like... Oh yeah, the Maker Angels. Yeah. Those were a thing. Once they could be like a like a super heavy or something. I'm pretty sure with DLC. Yeah, they'll probably, probably have new add, demons. They'll probably have new demons and stuff. Um. Because I'm pretty sure they're... I mean, you know, because they're trying to expand more on the lore. I'm really happy there is the... Um, yeah. Because I it, it just gives us more to uncover and uh, and whatnot. But, yeah, you know, uh, it's probably all down to, like, memory storage. Like, you know, they, uh, they needed to get the game out and they probably couldn't do all that much stuff. I mean, you only literally explore one section of Erdak. Um, yeah, that's true. You don't... You don't really get to explore Urdak that much, and I think it, I think what they'll they'll probably do is they'll allow you to discover more of Urdak in the DLCs. I think one DLC I I need I need them to do is I need the DLC of the in betweens between 2016 and Eternal. Oh yeah, that's definitely needed. Something yeah. I would absolutely love would be playing as Samuel Hayden <laughs> <laughs> and telling everybody. Uh, you can't shoot a hole in the surface of Mars. <laughs> Art and energy is so important. <laughs> um, I am not the villain of this story. <laughs> I am the exposition giver of this story. Just give everyone an exposition. <laughs> you have to press a button as quickly as you can to give the best exposition. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Samuel Hayden experience. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing that I thought was interesting is between the the Balgar and the Tyrant, um, while they try and separate the two cyber demons apart, if you look at the move sets of the Tyrant, they very much took from the previous iteration. Um, they did. It's got yeah. the arm. I feel like they could have made him more like the original cyber demon that they have him be the Tyrant from Doom One and Doom Two. Yeah, I mean, like he's got the arm blade. He's got the the homing. A tracker thing with his gun um, yeah and i don't know if he actually uses them in game because he's meant to be slow but if you look at the back of his model he's got like the back jets too he he does use them um only in like open areas though but i have seen him i have seen him like use those but it's very rare that he does usually he just stays put Oh, one thing I love is um, when you do enough of the uh, destruction on his body, and you can see like the red Terminator eye. I like that. Yeah, that's a nice I little really detail. Like um, okay. Um, how are we doing in terms of demons? Are we? Do we have any more? Uh, I think thoughts? one. The last demon I don't think we have talked about is Pain Elemental in particular. Pain Elemental. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't think there's I much think... to say about the Revenant either. 
No. Other than Revenant playing as him. Revenant. Yeah. Uh, yeah, other than playing as him. But no, the Revenant is pretty much the same as he's been. It's just... I actually yeah. prefer his design in the previous game. I, I actually too. agree. He looked more like a skeleton in that one. This one just kind of seems like... Um, actually, Rockhard Gamer said this himself. He looks almost, like, plasticky. Yeah, he, he definitely has that no, kind of look I feel like him. they just dumped an extra gallon of blood on him just to make him try to look more intimidating in this one. The green and eyes were work. off to me. Are they yellow? What, what color no, they're were green. The eyes in the next one, in the last one. Really? The last one were just really? white eyes. eyes? They're like white eyes. Than last week. Yeah. Um. So sorry, um, Pain Element. To go this... Sorry. Sorry. What would you say, uh, Perfectus? Well, I was just trying to say that if they wanted to make him look more like his original counterpart. They should have gone with a just just with a more uh, skeletal look. I mean, he looks kind of goofy in the original game, but like if if they were trying to go with this entire shift in general from the Doom 2016 aesthetic to the Doom 1, Doom 2 aesthetic, they could have just made him look more like his original part rather than just dumping more blood on him. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I think we're going to get to the pain elemental now. Um, okay. All right, so... I know you had some thoughts, Justin. Did you? Uh, no, I don't really. No? I don't really have much to say about him. Um, other than like, maybe the fact that you know, it's. I, I do like the fact that he just doesn't spawn lost souls and they just kind of float around like they do in in uh, in Doom Two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he. I really like him. Uh, I do, I do find him a, a really cool demon to fight, but there's nothing really particular. I, I mean, he, I have before we were playing before we started the stream today. I was playing Necroval Part Two, and there's that section where you go up the like at the beginning. There's he does spawn one. He does have an attack that can take out I think about like like eight bars of your whole health. Damn. Yeah, like he did it to me, and I went from like. 200 health down to like 50 in like one attack <laughs> jesus he's a he's he's a fucking yeah like when whenever a pain elemental appears you really gotta focus on because he, he could be a bastard um but he's not you know there's nothing like there's no special way to kill him it's just you know like unless you use the the arbalist mod you know to take out flying demons and stuff like that but uh I do. I really do enjoy him as an enemy type, though. I really, I really do like the way he looks. I like the way he fights, and I like that uh, he promotes using aerial combat, like hooking to him and like I think, doing um, like the, the shotgun on him and stuff. It's really nice. I think Rockhard Gamer described the Pelion Elemental as um, his personal scariest demon on his like top five scariest Doom demons. He is a pretty freaky looking dude. <laughs> he is. Um, I think he said, like, it gave him, like, nightmares as a kid or something like that. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, the, the original sprite, it looks really goofy today. You know, like, he's got the little tiny stubby arms, and he's got a big fat smile on his face. Um, but, like, you know, for, for kids back in the day, that that is a freaky-looking demon. You know, because when something looks, like, uncanny like that, or it's got stubby little arms and a big fat smile and this weird-looking, like, black hole eye... Uh, you know, it makes sense why, you know, freak people out, even though it now it looks really stupid. <laughs> I'd argue yeah. that, I'd argue that the uncanniness still makes the original Dooms scarier than anything that the new ones come about today. Um, one thing I, I gotta say, it's I still, actually, um, sorry, go ahead. I don't understand, I just feel, everything about the old game feels off just because of the, the, uh, rendering system. Mm, oh, yeah. yeah. I gotta say, I actually really love the um, the eight jaws that this guy has. Yes. I thought that was like a nice little a nice little detail there. Um, all right. Um, do we have any other thoughts on the the demon roster? Not really, to be quite honest. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think I've said pretty much what I've said about all the demons so far. Perfectus. I guess uh, just talk about something more related to gameplay that I did not get to say earlier that is still pretty relevant to demons. And that's just something about the dash mechanic. And that's in this game that the dash mechanic really makes you 
it really encourages you to just dash towards the demons and get that glory kill where in 2016 yeah. you just kind of walk at a steady pace at, or not walk but you'd briskly run at a steady pace towards them to glory kill or maybe do a double jump but here you rush to kill that demon because you know you want it and i just think that's something you, that's you have to you have to as well because you can die so quickly in eternal yeah. you could die quicker in eternal i believe than you could in, in 2016 so like when you get into a, a demon into a glory kill state in 2016, it was like, oh, cool, I'm going to do a cool uh, glory kill on him. But in this game, it's like, I need to fucking kill him. <laughs> like, give me him now. I need to know. Yeah. Um, all right, and that's all I have to say about demons. All right, uh, Jared Crash, any more? Any more thoughts? No, I'm ready to move on to the next topic. <laughs> okay, everyone. Um, we went... Um, from many demons, we went from zombies to icons, um, six-nippled fatties to to snake women. But now it's time to look at the Black Knight himself, the elephant in the room. <laughs> okay, yes. the Marauder. Yes, the elephant. <laughs> the <beat>, the <laughs> All right, let's see if the if we can oh, like the Marauder so lock horns. <laughs> Because I feel God, like there's so going to be a bit of that happening. <laughs> so my experience with this guy was that, uh, you know, we all, we all know how he functions, right? He is, oh, yeah. he, you got to get him in this mid-range where he's not too far, but not too close. And it only, he's only susceptible at a certain time when his eyes flash green. <laughs> and that's when you can shoot him. And if you do anything else, he automatically deflects your attack or he sends a dog after you or, or he holds up a shield. He's just invulnerable. So he's just he just demands so much of your attention that you basically have to ignore the entire arena, and, and it it just got so frustrating for me that to be honest, after dealing with this guy, I just did not want to play the game anymore, and I, I I turned the game off and played something else for a week. Now you can say like okay, well there's there's a certain way you need to beat him, and I know that's true. There's plenty of people out there that have a system down for taking this guy out. You know, get good and all that. But the truth is, I don't have to get good. I don't have to play this game. <laughs> and I feel, I feel like that's something that you know, maybe didn't take into consideration. Is like, well, it it's not it's not the kind of annoying that wants me to keep trying. It's just the kind of frustrating that makes me want to stop. And I think that's just my personal experience with this. Character. I mean, so I'm not saying I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, uh, uh, I'm going to go really in-depth on the Marauder, because <laughs> You're going to go in-depth? Is... Let me make a general statement first. Yeah, you make a general statement. I'm going to go really in-depth on the Marauder. Okay. Oh, the thing about the Marauder is that... <sighs> Alright, how do I put this? I don't want to send and kick him out of the game or nerf him. And I don't want to say that he's the best thing that's ever happened to Doom. I just want to say that I know they wanted to make something unique and put a challenge in there, but if it's making that many people frustrated and that many people just tired of him, then maybe they something wrong. Something happened. There was some sort of miscommunication or miscalculation, okay? If you're not making everybody well not okay not everybody i don't want to say that if you're not making the majority of your players happy with him something went wrong either you presented him wrong i think it was present i think it was the presenting honestly um yeah. i would i would have to agree with you on that because it wasn't until markiplier's gameplay showed up that he we found out he had a shield <laughs> yeah yeah um, I think it was definitely, uh, I think it was definitely that. The presentation was not what people were expecting him to be like. Um, I think yeah, that's why I think, a lot of people got really caught off guard with him. I think, um, the real problem, and I mentioned this in, again, one of Rockhard's videos was, I think the real issue is that, um, you know, once again, going back to these, uh, enemy tutorials, it's very misleading, or at least it doesn't really let you in on, um, the more specific, like, it, the tutorial doesn't tell you that the wolf spawns if you shoot the shield, you know, it doesn't tell wolf you. was the most confusing thing ever for me. I 
had to look it up on how it works. As, I think it's like you know, like if he absorbs enough of your rounds with a shield, he sends out the wolf. They don't yeah, say and that. that and they, I had no they idea. Actually... I the wolf was just an enemy I did not know about. No, I like, think. Oh, what, what is this wolf demon? Now, I think I know why they didn't put that in the tutorial, and I think that's because they actually wanted players to figure that out. Um, yeah. Because if they just told you, then you just wouldn't shoot the shield at all, you know? That's true, that's true. But, so, uh, I do agree with something that Count Lazuli said, and that was that the big mistake that they made for the Marauder was that they made him an enemy that you encounter him and you kill him. Rather than making him a character. Now, they always oh, talked about yeah. him being your um, your nemesis. Your yeah, they he's your didn't equal, basically. Him. Yeah, he's supposed to be your equal. If he had been an actual anti-slayer, be a guy that's just so freaking strong that he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the slayer and, um, you know, is able to bet, act like him, fight like him, fight on his ground, fight on his turf, his style and make it out alive, and maybe even beat him, that would be badass. He, he um, would legitimately be the negative or evil version of the Slayer. I mean, hmm. I'm a sucker for those kinds of characters. Oh, Venom yeah, me too. Marvel is my okay, all-time favorite character of everything. <laughs> so, I um, think that would be much better. So, um, you know, I'm just going to kind of... funny, because they actually had... Uh, they, they were actually setting up the... Uh... Fuck, what was his name? The Doom the, Hunter? The Slayer. The Hunter, what's this called? Doom Hunter. The guy that floats on the platform. Yeah. They were kind of setting him as, as that to yeah. be that guy. Because yeah, the game, they really you know, were. You encounter him, you see him being built, you follow him. Like he, They really build him up in a big way. This guy doesn't seem to get quite as much build up, the Marauder. And yeah, yeah and I, think and I have to agree with sucks, what you were saying. It definitely would have been better off as, you know, he shows up for, you know, he shows up throughout the entire game and you have to defeat him towards the end as like yeah. just an yeah. antagonist to just and, pester you. And and I would say, I, I think that would have, been, I, I think that even though I do enjoy the Marauder fight, and I will, I will go and explain why. I, I do agree with that sentiment that like, I think it would have been a lot cooler if he was like a... Uh, a, a nemesis type enemy, you know, where you go one on one on with him and whatnot. I think that would have been a cooler idea. Um, but like this guy right here, this motherfucker that everyone hates, <laughs> and his um, doggo. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go <laughs> into a lot of detail, and I'm gonna clear up some misconceptions that a lot of people are like. There's a lot of things about this guy that a lot of people don't actually know. Um, and there's a, a lot of people are spreading misinformation about this guy, uh, and making him out to be like way harder than uh, than he actually is. Now I'm not saying he's not difficult; he's not hard. But like, what well, JR Crash, what you were saying, right? Like, he is not invulnerable to literally uh, everything. See, if you shoot grenades at his feet, if you shoot a, a rocket detonation next to him, if you shoot the sticky bombs at his feet, he cannot deflect that it will damage him it does hurt him um so he's not invulnerable completely uh the way you really kind of have to participate in his dance is what i've been calling it you have to yeah. he's, so he's like he's, that's, that's he's like a, a yeah, that's, he's that's like a, the issue there. if i gotta dance like a, with the demon then, then he but, here's, but, but here's the thing though is that the entire <laughs> game you are dancing with the demons in particular but he is your equal. He is the guy that is the only demon that can take on the Slayer one on one, or just in general. Now, as someone yeah, I like say, me, I say equal. I say he's better because there's no situation. No, where, no. Know, is he's there a not, situation where the Slayer is invulnerable until he flashes his eyes for a second, mm -hmm. and otherwise, no, he's, he's invulnerable during his glory every, kills. Every round coming at him, <laughs> he's not. He's not better than you. He, Slayer he, is invulnerable during glory kills. He, he is not. He, he's not <laughs> yeah. better than you. And the reason why is because you have the tools. You have what you need to make sure that the fight is in your favor. See, it's all about, it's it's a learning curve. And he is a really difficult learning curve, and I know he's really frustrating. I mean, I've had experiences with bot with enemies like this in other games. And trust me, they all fucking suck. They really do. I feel like um, the... This, 
this guy is a true test of your knowledge of the game in particular. See, one of the biggest things about this demon that really uh, is going to get me to another demon from the original game is that you say that you have to divert all your attention to him, right? And that's true. When this guy shows up, you have to basically make sure that your mindset is on this guy and this guy alone. Well, you want to know another demon that did that back in 1994? Archvile. Archvile, yes. Whenever the Archvile showed up, he was one of the most annoying, and to this day, a lot of like classic Doomers consider him the most annoying piece of shit ever. Basically, Crash, what you are saying about the Marauder, people were saying about the Archvile back in 1994. <laughs> Yet, yes, uh, I know you're going to say that game is really old, and that's a really dated mechanic and whatnot, but see, back in that day, the Archvile was basically the Marauder at that point see, in time. See, I've actually played the original Dooms, and I don't remember the Archvile being nearly as annoying as the Marauder. Yeah, no, and, and he's not, but like, <laughs> I'm saying, back in the day, I see, that's why I, I, I say, that's what, I say. <laughs> what people are saying about the Marauder being unfair is what people were saying about the Archvile back in the day, because here's the thing, it is undeniable that whenever an Archvile shows up, you have to focus him. There, you ha There is no other thing you have to do you have to stop everything you're doing and you have to focus on that son of a bitch because if you don't he's going to revive all the de the demons that you've already killed and he's going to have that hit scan attack that can wipe you out and the marauder is almost the exact same see he doesn't spawn demons but he spawns that dog right so if you're if you're shooting at his shield and here's the thing too is that if demons shoot at him he will spawn the dog see it's not only it's not only you that triggers a dog. It's actually other demons that triggers a dog, which I will say is shit. <laughs> that that yeah, does that, really suck that other demons that is unfair. can trigger the, the, the dog. And I do think that's a little weird. The Marauder is an enemy that is supposed to put your skills to the test. He's, he demands your attention. And yes, a lot of people say that like, oh, then if if the Marauder is this difficult, then take out all the enemies. Well, here's here's my argument to that. The thing about, the reason why there's a bunch of enemies still running around and attacking you while he is for pushing you is because if those demons were not there in the first place, then that means no armor, no ammo, no health. If you were in a fight with a marauder one-on-one -on -one, with none of those demons around, you're dead. There's nothing okay, you can do. Let, let me say <laughs> something here. So I noticed a little... Um, little hole in your argument there that I'm gonna patch up for you right there. Okay. One that the hold on a second. Sorry, I was uh getting a call. Anyways, <laughs> one could say that you could just place all those resources down on the floor as pickups, and you would have the correct amount of resources to kill this guy, right? You'd have yes. all the ammo and all the health pickups and all the armor pickups on the floor and be like, okay, yes. boom, you're set to fight this guy. However, he would be a walk in the park if it were just him. Sitting around, waiting for this guy's eyes to flash, and then you super shotgun and blast to this guy, and then you just do yeah. it over and over again. I He'd do think it'd be rather boring son of a bitch. if you're not running around also evading other projectiles or demons. Now, do I think they balanced the amount of projectile lobbing mofos that they give while you're fighting him? I don't think so. I think the Slayer Gates, they give you way too many projectile lobbing mofos. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm talking but, from the perspective of someone who hasn't played on the hardest difficulties, but I feel like I've I've been able to manage the Marauder while simultaneously tackling the common demons. Yeah, you, it, it's very possible. To, um, because the game gives you all the tools necessary I mean, to get out of that kind of pickle, pretty much. Um, so that's a, that's a because that, I'm actually gonna let Lizuli finish his sentence because I'm. Um, actually, I'm <laughs> sorry. I had a few things to say about. Um, about uh, Shotgun Boy here. Um, so um, one thing is like a, a common um, common behavior people tend to have is they'll, um, they'll try and take out the other enemies before going after the Marauder. Now that's actually 
not just something we happen to do. That's by design, actually, not just for the yeah. Marauder, but a lot of the uh, a lot of the major demons, except for the Archvile. He's kind of like a get him now and quick. Get him um, now, okay. yeah. yeah, because see that with the Archvile, he's just standing there. He's not running toward constant. So it's more of like with the Archvile, it's more of like focus him very quickly. Otherwise, he's gonna spawn the shit to the demons and stuff like that. But with the Marauder, it's like you need those demons around you even if they are pushing you even if they're giving you a really difficult time you really need them because like the thing about the demons the fodder demons in this game is that even though they send like a lot of a lot after you especially with the marauder fight is that like not only are they your health and your armor and your ammo and whatnot so that way you're still keeping a steady pace because like this guy this marauder like i said he is your equal he's not better than you because here's the thing I play this game on Nightmare all the time, and I can wipe that guy out in about 10 seconds. So <laughs> what uh, Perfectus was saying is that if he was just by himself, he'd be one of the easiest fucking demons to fight because he's so trivial. He's, he's got such an easy mechanic to learn. And without these demons and whatnot, he becomes so easy that, like, you just, he's just you wipe the floor with them. So but it's kind of he, symbiotic with a mass in a way. Yeah, like, he's got this symbiotic... Uh, relationship with these demons, and that is a spider on my wall. That is scary. Please, no, no. <laughs> oh, shit, it's oh, a mastermind. God. Get rid of it. Spider Fuck! Mastermind. Quick, anyway, um, Justin, uh, uh, shoot, out its, shoot out its turret. But let me clarify what I meant just a little bit. So, okay. It, the Marauder isn't something that still gives me problems right now. I mean, obviously, I've beaten the game. I've beaten the Marauder. Yeah. It's not like I fought, I fought him one time and just quit playing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can take on the Marauder. I can probably even take on a couple of Marauders. It's just a, it's a very very steep learning curve, and it is. you know that is very when you true. hit that learning curve, and the curve is so steep, the curve becomes a wall. And when you hit that wall, when you're first learning the game, it's not pleasant, and it makes you want to quit. And that's kind of what yeah. I did. Because here's the thing: I, I I play video games to be entertained. I don't play video games to be frustrated and annoyed and angry. <laughs> so when I encountered this marauder. That's how it made me feel, and I caused me to put down the game. And I don't and think that's something that the developers intended to have people. So in my opinion, I felt, you know, I, I can handle the Marauder now because I've, I've learned him a little bit. I got mm -hmm. no, I, I know where you're, you're coming from on this. And in yeah. retrospect, yeah, I can enjoy him more as he is meant to be enjoyed just because I've gotten better at the game. Yeah. But you got to keep in mind a issue. It, um, I'm also somebody that's been playing first-person shooters for 20 years. So, I mean, if, if I get frustrated and quit a game, it kind of might be a red flag that something might not have been executed properly. Because I don't, I don't generally suck at first-person shooter games. But uh, yeah, no, that's, just, that's just anecdotally my experience. I'm sure that doesn't speak for everybody. It does actually yeah, speak for a lot of people. The learning curve just a it, bit more enjoyable. I think yeah, not as many people would have been frustrated with them. Again, See, a presentation issue. And, uh, yeah, um, here's, and, 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 uh, I'll tell you this. So, I'm, I don't say this, and I'm not gonna say get good. That's, that's not what I'm trying to say here, right? Because I do hate it when people say that say to it. people, you know? I really yeah. hate that. Because it's really like stand off, right? just by any game, really. Because here's the thing. <clears throat> what you said is very true, because, like, not everyone is gonna have the same. And some people, like like you, Crash, you're going to have a really hard time with him because he is a demon that... He's skill-based. He's very skill-based. And if you don't have that skill to really be able to understand him as quickly as possible, he is going to kick your ass. Now, like I said, I'm not saying that to, to downgrade you whatsoever because a lot of people are like that. Now, Juice um, just hates you. Yeah, I just hate you. No, <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. But here's the thing. I understand that. Honestly, I really do. I really understand that some people don't really like that learning curve, and some people aren't really in it to have a frustrating enemy uh, fight them, right? Take it mm. from me. Devil May Cry, again, what the fuck, Justin? But here's the thing. Devil May Cry has very similar enemies to the Marauder. I believe the first game, third, fourth, and fifth game have enemies that are very similar to him. Uh, the first game has a demon called Shadow. Uh, now, what Shadow is, he's like this black shadow cat that if you shoot at him... No, my bad. When he, he Because he's a shadow, he's able to go into the floor, right? And he's invulnerable. 
And if you just take your sword and, like, smack at him, your sword will deflect and he'll shoot, like, the spike at you to hurt you, right? But he's... Uh, not he's he's not invulnerable to pistol bullets. So if you take your gun out and shoot at him, he won't start shooting deflectors at you. And you have to fight him in a particular manner uh, and whatnot in order to defeat him. Uh, Marauder is the exact same. Uh, Devil May Cry 3, I believe, didn't really have an enemy like that per se, but they did have this one enemy type that would appear in harder difficulties. I forgot what her name was, but she's like the king of like the, the scythe demons um, that you fight in that game. She can teleport, she can deflect your attacks and whatnot. Um, she can do like these dive teleportation attacks where you have to like time the dodge just correctly or otherwise you're gonna get fucked and whatnot. Um, she sucks. And but like once you kind of do that learning curve, it's exactly like the Marauder. And then four has Blitz, uh, the reboot has this like weird samurai enemy that's can deflect all your bullets and pretty much all your attacks, but he leaves openings and whatnot. And then five has this demon called Fury, where you use this uh, Dante's like ability called Royal Guard, where you, he goes invisible and he dashes around. And if you Royal Guard just right at the right amount of time, you can deflect him and deal a shit ton of damage to him and make him die super quickly. That kind of enemy is basically what the Marauder is, meaning that they really looked at outside sources for demons in this game. And specifically, I'd say they looked at Devil May Cry a lot, because Devil May Cry has enemies like that all over the place. And they are bastard. Um, but as someone who has been playing DMC for, like like you, I've been playing DMC since for 15 years. Uh, I'm so used to that enemy design that someone like me, it's really easy to kind of understand that kind of mindset, whereas someone who hasn't played a game like DMC, who's played and fought enemies like that, it's very difficult for people to kind of understand that. And like I said, I'm not saying that to downgrade you, I'm just saying that because that is how it is. Like, some people don't experience these other type of enemies in other yeah. games because so this enemy is very saying. similar. So, yeah. <laughs> you're saying that it's difficult for people that are used to traditional first-person shooter games to take the Marauder out of the box of just regular demon that you can shoot at. Yeah, because it's just such a stark difference. Puts, that's basically what all the demons are put into that box, unless there's yes. explicitly a boss. It's like, okay, they're they're a demon, they're immortal. You shoot at them, maybe there's certain strengths and weaknesses where you take them down easier, but generally, if you throw bullets at them, they're going to go down. Uh, here's here's what the limit here, is that Exactly. It, it, it's harder for somebody who's got a more traditional background in FPSs to take the Marauder yes. out of that box and put him into, okay, this is a completely different kind of encounter and I need to approach it as its own unique thing. It's exactly. well, here, there's a dilemma here, though. It, it no longer becomes a question of is it good or not, but is it? but did people want it? I don't think and anyone wanted that kind of enemy. Wanted. No one did. I didn't ask for an enemy like so, this in Doom. When I um when I first learned of the Marauders mechanics from Markiplier's uh, pregame, um, mm -hmm. um, I was like I actually knew that people were going to be upset with this. In fact, I kind of I kind of yeah. force. It's funny because I kind of foresaw Jared Crash's opinion too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I just I just knew Jared Crash was going to be the one to go. Nah. Um, but I was just kind of like, all right, you know, I'll take it. Uh, just because I'm used to enemies like this where you have to, uh, like, you know, time the attack. Now, um, you know, I am I have no problem with the Marauders mechanics, although I can definitely see why people don't like them. Um, personally, the way I would have preferred them is, for those of you who've played Metroid Prime 2, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say I wish he was a Dark Samus type character. Oh, yeah. I have played too, but I have seen a lot of gameplay. Yeah, you know, where he's like a single, you know, he's a single entity who, you know, keeps mm -hmm. coming back at different times. Because I think, I think you could have like really played in to that sort of like coming when you don't expect. Like when you, when you play a uh, Taras Nabad, 
and you open the door, and he just shoots immediately with his yeah, axe. Yeah, he just fucking comes um, out of nowhere. It's like, yo, I, <laughs> I, think, I think that would have been much more impactful if you were an actual yeah, character. Yeah, exactly. Not only that, but you add to that, like, the whole Samus Dark Samus thing. It's your your evil dark half who's coming back to get you. Maybe, um, now this is just an idea, but... Because he's such a complex demon with different tools, maybe he gets these different tools with each new fight. Mm. You know? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. How about... No, never mind. That'd be a terrible idea. But yeah... <laughs> I kind of want to hear I, it now. I, I, I think wanna... when I was originally uh, talking, uh, you know, laying out my grievances with this character, I think I compared him to the hunter from Halo. Which yeah, at the time, you did. Everybody, yeah. everybody kind of thought was a good, a good example of like a really tough enemy unit that has a weak spot. I mean, yeah. you know, when the hunters enter the game, you have to really focus on them. You can't ignore them. They're tough as shit, yeah. but they have one little weak spot, and if you hit them in that Achilles heel, they go down easy. Now you yeah. can argue that for the Marauder, his Achilles heel is when his green eyes flash, and then that that's when he's vulnerable to it. His I Achilles guess my abs. Point is, that's just that's just for me. That's just much too much too narrow of of a window it's, of it's vulnerability. Because, yeah, and it's because uh, you need to have a quick. Uh, what's what's the word I'm trying to look for? Reaction time. Yeah, you have to have like a really quick reaction time because because this game is all based about about speed. You know, you have the meat hook, you have the dashing, you're running around at 500 miles an hour pretty much all the time. It's, it's really a, he's basically, yeah, he, he is, he is a, an, an enemy that is not in this type of a genre of game almost ever. Um, and I will, I will say it's a little weird that this type of, and I was not expecting a Devil May Cry like special enemy to be in this game. Um, you know, I like him, and I will say that I do think he is an awesome... I mean, for someone like me who's played DMC, I fucking love him, but, like, he is a, a, a very jarring enemy type. Um, and I can definitely see why, like, Crash is getting so frustrated. Is but... anybody... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, no, it's okay. It reminds me of, like, a Sco Scooby-Doo, how it's, like, uh, with the villains... Uh, I would have gotten away with it too if you weren't for your damn I would have gotten away with it too if Slayer would have seen. But yeah, have you guys I... never seen those memes where it's talking about like it shows like an image that's a really powerful entity, and it's like the boss when you fight him, and then it's like the boss when you unlock him as a playable character, and he's like really scrawny or something. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how I feel about the Marauder compared to his counterpart in battle mode. Because he doesn't have his dang shield. Yeah, he doesn't have a shield at all. I think... But um... yeah, no. Oh, yep. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I... I really enjoy him, and I do find him as a welcome addition to the cast of demons. And I, I, I really... Like I said, I really do enjoy this fight. Uh, I definitely do think that there's going to be some tweaking there, that they're going to do maybe down another sequel... I kind of don't want them to change him because, you know, I'm so used to fighting him now that, like, yeah. changing him because a lot of people are getting stuck on him, I think, would really degrade what they're trying to do with him because there is a reason why he is as difficult as he is. And it's because he is, a, he is an enemy that demands your full arsenal and your full knowledge of the combat of the game. And if you do not have that knowledge and if you don't have that arsenal... He is going to give you a really hard time, um, and yeah, I don't really I don't want. Be against them changing him at this point, also simply because of people who have actually gotten to the point where they they become comfortable fighting him and they can take him down. It's kind of like uh, yeah. it's kind of like a high hurdle to achieve. It's like uh, you've you've accomplished something great in that you can take down truly horrific hellish character. And you're good at it, right? And I, and then, I wouldn't want to deprive anybody of that uh, accomplishment. Exactly. You know, especially it's too you know, late to do anything with that. Um, yeah, like, that's why. Like, I see, I see all these journalists say, "Change the Marauder, change him, change him now." And nah. it's like, no, don't nah. change him. <laughs> don't, don't um, leave him. Be he does not need to be changed. He is fine the way he is. And you know, because like that, that would also affect people who, uh, you know, like. 
uh, don't have the most trouble with them, but do struggle with them a bit, that would that would affect their experience as well. But it would definitely experience someone like me, who uh, really loves the challenge that he gives and loves the puzzle that he gives. But then if like they nerf him and they take away his shield, then he's just going to be boring to me because he becomes away another demon. A great element that I thought was really good. And now, since he's catering more towards people who are really having such a hard time, like I said, I'm not degrading you, J.A. Crush, whatsoever. I have the utmost respect for you. It's okay. I really mean that. <laughs> but, like, uh, you know, someone like me with, with such a high skill and whatnot, this kind of enemy is something that I really wanted uh, and I really needed out of, out of, like, 2016. And for them to, like, downgrade him and make him just a, a pussy ass bitch because. He kind of just becomes a common demon. Said, eh. Yeah, to me, that would really ruin my experience. So, I would say this, though. I mean, if they changed it so that he was, like, a total pushover in, like, the easiest difficulty, because let's be honest, none of us play the easiest difficulty. I mean, I kind of did. (laughs) I did the first time. Okay, well, well, okay. (laughs) Before before Perfectus um, disembowels my intestines, um... So I kind of have a, a habit of when I get a new game, I play on the easiest difficulty just to know what I'm dealing with. Then I go on the harder stuff. See, that's mm-hmm. why I, that's why I always pick medium. You know, I always pick hard. Yeah, I always start on the mi- medium. medium. <laughs> oh no, maybe I mean... I'm a pushover. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, see, it's not, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I have the same exact philosophy, but with medium. That's why. That's why I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um, well, you but can yeah, definitely... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. That is pretty much all I have to say about the Marauder, though, <laughs> uh, I will say. Um, because if if it's okay, because I'm probably going to head out in a bit, if we can get onto battle mode, if yeah. it's possible. Uh, yeah. Because I want to talk... I do have some strong opinions about battle mode. First snap map! Uh, um, yeah. Well, there, there's no snap map, so you know oh! that's, that is what it is. <laughs> So I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> but I do... I'm not going to talk about, oh, you know, con- like, oh, battle mode's the only mode they have. Yeah. I'm going to talk about... I'm going to critique battle mode as a mode in particular. Um, so if it's okay, can we move on to that? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, all right, let me look at... Uh, let me go at the thing. Um, so I will say this. Um, you can definitely see why the Marauder had his own subsection. <laughs> um, yes. I, I know this is your... Sh- Show Lazuli, so I don't want to like you know dictate um, how you how you. But if you can just I mean, get, like the last things like lore and, and everything, yeah, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna get off soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I tell you that's what, why, that's why I want to talk about battle modes. Um, I tell way. you what, yeah. uh, we can we can we has we still have story, but I think we can skip the art design thing. It's a short one anyway. Um, you yeah. know, the art is really good. <laughs> the art is fucking amazing. Yes. Hey, if you the art, everybody, please. It it's tell so good. It's so mm-hmm. good. Uh, you guys, let me know if you wanna if you wanna like take a couple minutes on that one. Um, I think well, since it's really short, I think it's okay to kind of move move on. Um, yeah, because I All like right. I said, I think the art speaks for itself. So we actually so if we skip um art design, we actually have only uh, three sections left. Um, and they're not that long either. Um, we've mm-hmm. got uh, we've got story, we've got multiplayer, and we just have like bonus content like secrets and stuff yeah so i actually had um i think you had a category that you, you mentioned earlier and that was like sound and, and music that's part and of the art design that, that's part of art design yeah yeah okay well let, let me let me pour into that real quick because i do All actually right. have a major that. um i will just um, say this um about the marauder before we go um, whether you love him or hate him, he's definitely going to be remembered in the Doom community as yes, one of the big boys. Yes, he is a memorable <laughs> demon because of how much of a bastard he was. All right, and so. Very... <laughs> Art design. <laughs> okay, so I guess if this, if, so the, the, the art itself as far as the visuals I think is great, but where I take issue is, with, for one, the sound effects of the weapon, weapons fire, way too soft way too quiet really you know mm-hmm. yeah i i was mm. not happy at all with with just how how kind of weak sounding the weapons are in this game actually you know, thought they I had want... more oomph they really mm. didn't for me i mean uh, unless there's huh. some way i can sort of adjust my sound settings for that but uh yeah it's just like when i fire off a, a weapon it's just very it's just very 
very sort of soft and quiet and muted. And compared to the rest of the game, like the sound effects for demons, they're, they're good, but the weapons just, just don't. They're just too quiet and too soft. I, I can I, I see... I could see where he's coming from because the sound effects for the guns do sound not as oomphy as uh, 2016 did. Hmm. I think it's because uh, like what I ran into is that the sounds are kind of eh. I do like the sounds, but they're kind of eh. But the guns do feel really, really powerful and really, really yeah, the, girthy. Don't get me wrong. Weapons themselves. But the, I do the, have the to say. Sound effects. Yeah, that's yeah, a different I, thing. I do have to say that I kind of, I kind of noticed the, I think the only gun that, the only two guns that I think sound the best, besides like maybe the BFG, uh, is probably the, the rock. I like the, the rocket launcher makes. I really, I really love that sound. Um, and I do like the sound the ballista makes. I really do like that sound a lot. Um, but a lot of the other guns definitely, like, they definitely do sound kind of quiet uh, and whatnot. Yeah. I think that's just um, the way they balanced the sound when they were yeah. doing the, the audio engine. If they would have just made the weapons, because, like, I like it when, like, the original Halo is just a good example of having nice, loud weapons, like the assault rifle, the sniper rifle. You really crack off a round, and you can you can feel the recoil and the sound effects. It's just, yeah, you almost want to be slightly startled when you when you hear the sound of your weapon firing. And I didn't get that experience at all from this game, so a little disappointed in the in the weapon firing sound um, effects. Um, another game that. Another game that oh, go ahead. I was gonna say that another game that I think has really good weapon sound design would be Call of Duty Black Ops Three. No, I did not play. Yeah, multiplayer. that game. That game does have some good sound design. I played the hell out of zombies, like the KRM. You can really mm -hmm. feel some behind that as a shotgun or yeah. the ray gun. It's got it's got an iconic. Oh yeah. Pew, pew. Yeah, I mean when no. the shotgun goes off, it needs to be loud. It's a fucking shotgun. Okay. Now I <laughs> have. <laughs> I actually have a controversial topic about the music in this game. I okay. Do, first off, first off, I want to say music, it's really fucking good. It's <laughs> fucking, that music that plays when you do Mars Core. That <laughs> See, for me it was um for me it was the arc complex. Uh, the only thing they fear is you. That um, <laughs> that and the that gladiator theme. So yeah, the gladiator music is the best track in the whole fucking game. Yeah. No, um Doom twenty sixteen has such a unique soundtrack that I don't know how to like okay, so it's video game music, of course, but like it sounds more loud and it's got a unique sound and feel to it. Whereas yeah. the music in this game, although really fucking Mike Gordon did a fantastic fucking job. But I I don't really find almost any of the tracks memorable. Uh, yeah. Besides, I like... I was going to say the exact same thing. Yes. Here's this, what I think this game has the almost no memory. The most memorable yeah. soundtrack is honestly the, the, the title, the, the menu screen from the beginning of the game. Yeah, do, that's do, like... Do, 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 yeah, like, I fucking whistle that. The yeah, reason see, we're not remembering any of these is because they like melody. Now... I, I do yeah. understand why they do it. They have this sense of chaos and urgency while you're fighting the demons. But and they it comes do a good job at that. <laughs> they do, they do. It's fantastic. But it comes at the sacrifice of a beat that you remember. That's why we all remember yeah. that alien-sounding whistle from the menu, because it's the only melody we have to yeah. associate with it. Well, I right. feel like, um, I feel like Arc Complex down. had that melody. Our complex had a really good track. It it has a great track. I felt like honestly, like I felt so. like that one had a bit of a melody. Okay, it was yeah, complicated. There's a few scattered in there, but there is. They're We're talking very, few very, very few and between here. Very but, few. Exactly. Good they're, they're very. Most they're very... Of the time you're talking ambient sound. You're talking just sort of like a, a strumming chord on like an electric like da 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 da. Like just play any random level and stop and just listen to the sound, and you're gonna notice like it's not really memorable. It's just sort of dissonant reverbing. Yeah, like the music uh, is good, but like it's not, not really memorable. And it's you know, it's it's it, it kind of sucks to be honest. If I it's I don't I don't think it sucks. I think it's really good. It's just 
I think good, I know memorable. Exactly, it's, it's, I, think I know that's exactly. A to put it. I know exactly. Compared to what, 2016, okay, that's what we're, I'm comparing it to right now. Yeah, like, yeah. It, listen to the OST from 2016 and compare that to the original soundtrack for Eternal. It, yeah, it's like, very clear that there's a huge quality difference. Here's here's a good reference point. Let's look at Doom One and Doom Two. We could all probably just replicate some of the soundtracks from there because they didn't have the tools to make something as ambient. So they're all very memorable melodies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah no, um, what I was going to say is this, is that, like, uh, one, well, one, I, I will add this really quick before I go into it. I actually miss the glory kill music things where when you glory kill a demon, the music kind of, like, does this weird, like, really cool thing and it eases back into it. I really miss that. I thought that was fucking, like, so, so badass. Mm, I miss that. Okay. I'm not going to lie. Um, but anyway, um, no, I think the real big problem is that the music is good. It, it, it's really good in this game. There's a lot of good tracks in here, and they are very good. Um, and only the problem is that only a few are memorable. And the reason why is because when Mick Gordon made the soundtrack for 2016, he went on this. I can't quote him exactly, but he basically went on to say that like a lot of games will just kind of have the music in the background and y you hear it, but it's not really important, you know, like it's just kind of there, you know, to have like some sort of like cool little melody play and whatnot, but you don't really remember it too much. And he said he, he strided to make a soundtrack where it is one of the main parts of the combat. The, the music is in your face. It's loud. It's It's got this particular tone to it. And he said he wanted to make the music a, a genuine, like, he didn't, he, he strived to make it to where you didn't just look at the music of the game and go, oh, yeah, it's just there. No, he wanted you to know it's there. He wanted you to, to know that, hey, this is a song that's playing right now, and it is really telling you exactly what's going on in this fight. Whereas Eternal doesn't have that. It's almost like he kind of went back uh, on that part, and like I said, there are some good tracks in Eternal, like the Icon of Sin theme, the fucking uh, the Gladiator theme, the 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 one in Art Complex. Those are really and and the Mar. I'm gonna say the Mars Court track as well, because that shit is just chaos incarnate, and I love it. But they uh, only really the the Icon of Sin and Gladiator theme does it have that in your face loud sound, whereas every other track just is just there. It's not really too crazy yeah. it's not too loud and it's not as big and huge like 2016 is and that's not the shit on the music in eternal itself that's just like coming from the guy who kept on hyping up that he had a heavy metal choir for this game uh it it's very actually it's, it's, very... it's mediocre to the extreme and i mean i'm not saying it's 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 like total shit like it's like fucking yeah. nes beep, beep. Type of shit, but like it, yeah, it, it, it's it's very not noticeable. There yeah, was actually like a, it, there, it, it, it was, could have been a lot better than it for sure. For sure. I mean, I still but, love the music. Um, oh, I do too. Like, you know, I'm not saying like I absolutely hate the music. I'm just saying that like coming from a person who fucking is is so big into music and so big into like OSTs in general, is that like. I really kind of felt a little let down by just how like big and huge, uh, because the the tracks in 2016 are so unique and they're so different from one another. Where everything in Eternal kind of sounds samey and whatnot, almost not ex not too much, but a lot of the tracks feel a little samey. There were actually uh, a, there were a couple of ambient tracks that really stuck with me. The um, ambience was really good, though. One the of ambient... them music was fucking great one of them was kind of that desolate ambience oh, in the um... oh <laughs> oh call of hell call of hell is my favorite ambient um when you first go on the citadel at the end of the first uh first mission i i literally just stood there like holy shit this is kick ass i just it, want to hear this um there's the that ambience. one the call of hell I, I... Yeah, the um, ambience in this game is amazing. I another, will say. it's very good. Another good one is the the Doom Hunter base ambience, where you. Oh <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. that one. Oh, that that has some um, of the best fucking ambience in the entire game. My and, God. And then another one. It's not really rhythmic, but it's kind of that desolate, that desolate 
tone coming from the uh, the Sentinel ruins. Yep. So here, I think here's right. where I take the issue. It's um, part of what makes Doom Doom in my mind is having that kick-ass metal soundtrack while you're... And when you don't have that, it's just not as much Doom as Doom needs to be. You know what I mean? It, there, there is... You know, Doom I mean, in your it, sentence. It, it is there. You know, the, the kick-ass heavy metal soundtrack, like I said, it's not bad, and it's really fucking good. It's just... The, the way it's presented, it's presented in a different way than the way 2016 was, because the way I can describe it is that in 2016, it was like you were listening to a band's single song while fighting demons. Whereas in this game, it just feels, it sounds like video game music where it's there and it's in the background and it's not really important. In 2016, it, it was like you're sitting there at a metal concert and listening to an actual single track, uh, if that makes any sense. Because uh, with like video game ambience, um, like battle music, you know, it eases in and it eases out. Whereas a song, it starts up um, and it has a particular way how it sounds and a particular way it ends and whatnot. And that's kind of how 2016 sounded. Whereas Eternal sounded more ambience uh, like because there is a metal track and it is really good, like I said. And you do feel like a fucking badass. It's just yeah. it doesn't yeah. stick with so, you as much as 2016. I, I, there are certain games where just having ambience works. A game like this, with this kind of fast-paced combat, is not one of them. This, this is a this is a this is a, a the type of a game where you need to be getting your ass kicked by some heavy fucking. Okay, that's just my opinion, but it also happens. See, with you guys saying this, I feel like I have to go back and listen to the soundtrack because, um, I mean, I actually feel the same way about the previous game soundtrack and that. It's all so crazy that a lot of it blends. Mm -hmm. I actually felt the same way about mm -hmm. that, but it's kind of like I, I gotta go and like I gotta go back and listen to this game's soundtrack. I mean, I have it um, on a fucking yeah. USB. Um, but the yeah, that just kind of got me thinking. Just amazing. Um, and so it's, there, wow. there is something that I do like more about this game's soundtrack than the previous game soundtrack which kind of goes with the general aesthetic and atmosphere of the two games as well and that's that this one has less of an indict now don't get me wrong i did like that aspect of the music in doom 2016 however i feel like it was a bit repetitive and went along with the repetitive nature of the scenery where we'd have these kind of bland UAC facilities that we'd kind of be going all through a lot of. This one had a bit more of a hellish feel to it. Mm -hmm. and I, I think it's very more is, chaotic, for sure. Yeah, that, I think that is certainly something that they did better this time around, just stylistically. Yeah, because stylistically, the, the, the chaotic way of the music actually does fit the game. It does. Uh, because, but it's just, you know... Uh, it, it's just one of those moments where, like, 2016 just had so many... Like, every track was memorable. Every track was literally a fucking hit. Um, whereas this game, it's like, only a couple are. Uh, and that's about it. Um, Something that not... is disappointing about this one as well is that there is no equivalent to BFG Division in this one. I mean, you yeah, I disagree. Well, the Gladiator fight. Yeah, I feel like that's equivalent. the one... That's the uh, one. I, I like that one. I wouldn't. I, I don't. I wouldn't call it a BFG division. No, it's not a BFG division. Of course, I mean BFG division is literally so good. It's fucking like it's, there's nothing. It's like in it. this game. <laughs> it's in this game. Yeah, it's in Eternal. It's, it's in the game, but it doesn't play at any um, vital point of the story. It plays when um you, when your ship shuts down. Victorium? Shit shuts down. You oh, fight the, oh, the that was in the Victorium. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. When your ship shuts down, I actually really hated myself because I pulled out the BFG and killed them all, and then they were all gone, and I was yeah, so. Yeah, the music stops. Yeah. I actually did that and once. I, like, no! <laughs> I did that. I did that too. I did that too. Um, I, I hated myself for the rest of that day. So, all right. So, um, the next one is a story because I do have a lot of things to say on that one. But um, for Justin's sake, I'm willing to swap the order with multiplayer. If you want, yeah, okay. yeah, if that's okay, because yeah, I want, I, yeah. I do want to say what I am gonna say, and then I'm probably gonna hit the hay. 
All right. Um, because I do, I do have a lot to say. Because I think the story is probably the most beefiest and biggest part <laughs> of what this game is going to offer. And I, I would love to be here to talk about it because I do have a lot to talk about. But I think, in my personal view, I want to talk about this game's multiplayer. I really yeah. do. Yep. All right. Um. Well, does anyone else have anything they want to say, or we'll just yeet to the next section? Let's proceed. Crash. Crash, buddy. Mr. Bandicoot. Crash. Well, we'll just move on. Um, okay. All right. Uh, multiplayer. Okay. More specifically, right. battle mode. And eventually, invasion mode. Invasion eventually. mode? Yes. Invasion mode is going to be kind of like a happy medium between campaign and battle mode. From what we're seeing. Well, oh, is that, is that the one where you play as a demon... In a campaign. campaign. Yeah. Yep. It's not out uh, yet, yes, but I, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to that. Yes. I'm going to troll so, my friends. Battle mode. There's a guy in... There, there's a guy... Well, there's a user watching us named Feet. I love it. <laughs> really? Yeah, so I'm just see. looking at it right now. Yeah, if you go to the to the user and chat icon and press that, there's just a guy named Feet. A little of it. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> this mode... Now, I know we can all talk about how the fact that they replaced traditional multiplayer in Snap Up with this one fucking singular mode, and I know everyone's <laughs> all pissed off about that, and, yeah, everyone has strong, and, and I know everyone has strong opinions about that, which I do as well, but I don't want to go off topic, and I want to just experience this game and, and try to just leave this game out as what it is um, and whatnot. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to sit here and criticize a game for not having Snap Map or traditional multiplayer. I want to, I want to criticize the actual package that the game offers, not really like what it should have had, but what it does offer. And that is after you beat the game, uh, you have two options. You can either go back and replay levels or do master levels, uh, which that's a whole separate thing, but, uh, you have battle mode here. Battle mode is a 2v1 isometrical, I think that's what they call it, um, multiplayer where, yeah, symmetrical, where one player plays as a slayer and two players play as demons, and they all have to go off and pretty much kill each other until one team is pretty much wiped out uh, and whatnot. And it goes by three rounds, uh, so like, if, uh, you know, well, mostly six, but like, you know, it can go like two here, two here. Um, anyway, so. This multiplayer, I okay. So I have gotten the golden podium. I have 50 matches played for every demon and the slayer, and I consistently do hop on and I do consistently play this mode. Now, this mode is really awesome. It's really good, and I do think that it is one of the most unique multiplayers and one of the most addicting multiplayers I've ever played. Now, a lot of people who play this mode over and over again because it's the only one here you're going to get sick of it after a little while, for sure. This multiplayer, though, really, really goes towards a specific demographic, though. Because, see, with, like, traditional multiplayer, because we all know that Doom 2016 multiplayer did not do as well as it hoped. Uh, and I do like that game's multiplayer, but it, you know, it, it definitely, you know, I don't think it deserves a lot of the critiques it got, but it definitely is, because it's not as bad as everyone says it is, but... It definitely did not feel like Doom. It felt like something different. Where this feels like Doom, but it's very teamwork based because you're you're doing skill versus teamwork, uh, or skill versus strategy. Um, and when you have a game mode like this, especially a game mode where the Doom Slayer it has his full arsenal, all of his abilities and whatnot, and he's as powerful as he is you start to run into some issues that I'm going to bring up, and I'm pretty sure all, all of us have played enough battle mode to realize this. The network coding of this game, <laughs> multiplayer, is not... I, I don't really know much about coding, coding outside of Snap Map, but the network coding of this game is awful. It is terrible. Um, slayers are freezing, constantly demons are freezing, leading to a lot of matches feeling really unfair and really undeserved. I have had many matches where me and my teammate, uh, Demon, will see a Slayer freeze in place and you're still able to damage him, and he stays there for a good, for a good couple seconds and the ma match just ends. Um, that is very, very bad. That is a huge problem. 
because if you're going to pr if you're going to promote this new multiplayer and say you made it in house and it's like all brand new and you can't even get the net coding right, uh, that really really uh, upsets the balance of this game, uh, especially with uh, apparently I did some research and apparently the demons got nerfed um and really? i this is a big no-no to me this is a huge no-no oh it gets into why. your no-no zone it gets in my no-no and here's why so the slayer okay is way too overpowered he is way too overpowered i'm not kidding i heard a Even lot of people best... say the opposite no no uh it is not the opposite i mean it depends then again it does depend on your skill but as someone like me, I have almost I I rarely get loses as Slayer. I I'm not kidding. Like that's not me like bragging. It's it's genuine. Like my level of skill is so high, I almost never lose a game. In fact, the only times I ever lose a game is when uh fucking like I have to try to go easy because the teammate the the the, the team I'm fighting against is like super low level and they're just getting the game. That sometimes I'll just let them win. Only a very rarely have I ever been actually bested by two demon players. It's extremely rare when it happens. Um, and the Slayer is so powerful. And here's why. A lot of people went out and were complaining that, oh, the Slayer is like, or the demons are super, super underpowered, right? And to me, that's not true. They're actually really well well put together. What is a problem is a slayer. And the reason why is because like a lot of people will go out and say, like, oh, on PC, you can weapon switch so quick that it makes the slayer super overpowered. Now, that is true to an extent. Someone like me who has four years of 2016's Doom under my belt, I have memorized the weapon wheel more than anything. Like, I know exactly which gun is where, where I'll just hold the button for a split second, flick the analog stick, and you won't even see the weapon wheel come up, and I'll switch to that particular weapon. I'm not even I've done it multiple times during streams. I've done it multiple times during 2016. Um, that weapon switching is not an issue on console. You can wipe out demons in the blink of, I, in the blink of a second. I have had matches end within two minutes because i kept killing the demon players within 20 seconds of the round starting um and it, it can range to really skilled demon players to not really skilled demon players um it's all about knowing what you do and this is broken this game this multiplayer is so aloof the slayer is what's the problem it's not the demons that are the problem it is the slayer I am a I am a max level on here, and I know every demon really well, and I have fought against many high skill uh, slayers, and I cannot tell you how many times when I meet a high skilled slayer, the rounds always go zero to three. We lose, we never win one game. Very rarely will we win like one round, and the slayer just wipes the floor with us so easily. And this also goes into play with that net coding. I think a lot of what I'm talking about would be fixed. If that net coding wasn't an issue, but as it stands right now, this mode is broken. It what is, is net coding? Net code, basically, from my understanding, is the the latency. Like, uh, when when you get into a match and you start lagging, right, um, and whatnot. This game's netcode is, is, is not really well implemented to the point where uh, it doesn't matter how good your internet is, there's going to be server lag uh, completely. Um, and that is an issue because my internet is really good. I have really good internet and I have played with my friends who also have really good internet and they lag still. And that's not because of their internet, it's because the way the servers handle our internet is not done very well. Um, and that leads to freezing, that leads to Slayers lagging, that leads to demons freezing and making them an easy target, and the same thing with Slayer and whatnot. Um, it's it's so aloof, and it's so everywhere. Like, everything is just all broken. It's 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 weird. There's all these, like, uh, creaks and cracks into every single aspect of this mode that is a very good mode. I love this mode. I love battle mode i think it's a great addition um do i think it is what 
uh, I, do I think battle mode... Oh, hold on, I'm going to try to word this better. Do I think traditional multiplayer and snap app need to be sacrificed for this one mode? No. Not in the slightest. Uh, <laughs> this is just one multiplayer <laughs> mode. And honestly, uh, for if, someone, if I wasn't so addicted to this game, I would have probably stopped playing this mode mm, within the second day of playing the game. Um, and probably never touched it again because of these issues. Uh, it is not developed well. Um, I mean, it, it is des it's designed well, and there's so much potential with this mode. Um, but unfortunately, because of these issues, uh, it kind of falls flat on its face. And that's kind of for someone who really likes this mode. I really do. And it's been a month, and they still haven't fixed this netcode issue. Um, they still haven't, they nerfed the demons. They did not need to do that. The fucking Slayer needs to be nerfed. And that's coming from someone who is a really high skilled player. My skill, like I said, I don't, I don't say this to sound fucking bragging. I say this genuinely. My skill is so high that it doesn't matter how good you are as a demon. You're going to be wiped out within literal seconds. Um... And it's because of that netcode, and it's because of the, the Slayer's damage output. His damage output is insane. And you can literally get, like, over 13, 1400 damage out on a demon just by switching between the Super Shotgun and the Ballista. Like, within seconds, you can kill a Mancubus. Within seconds. I'm not even kidding. Um, and it's not balanced well. It's... The, the the damage output of the slayer is too much he needs to be nerfed uh the demons they do not they uh, they do, they do not need to be nerfed in the first place they are just fine as they are um and uh this mode has a lot that needs to be done i mean we're only one month uh in so far of the game the second series just finally came out um but i really really need to see some changes to this otherwise uh, I really fear that this really great mode is going to be completely forgotten about um, because of these issues. Um, balancing is a very important detail in your game, and especially for multiplayer. And when you have a Slayer that's like super fast and he's glitching the game out to where he's freezing and, and whatnot, because not only is it, is it a problem on the Slayer's front, but it's also a problem on the Demon's front because like, I'll be playing as the Revenant and notice the Slayer is, like, frozen, and then I just die because out of nowhere. Like, I literally just die, even though he's frozen there and you don't know what he's doing. And next thing you know, demon killed. And it's like, what the fuck even hurt me? What killed me? Oh, I know. It's because that Slayer that was frozen in time literally was invisible for me, and I, <laughs> I was wiped out before I even knew it. So, uh, do you oh. just... Let me ask you something. You had some uh, opinions no. there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's oh, uh, that's fine. I, I, yeah. Point. Put it in the battle mode, but, uh, let me ask you something, Justin. So I, yeah. I've only played literally maybe two or three rounds of battle mode. Uh, I, I, I won a couple matches, lost a couple matches, but ultimately, nothing about it really hooked me, and I wasn't really compelled to keep playing it. Uh, yeah. it, it just felt like okay, demons versus a slayer. Okay, is I would have been fine with just deathmatch. I would have been even more fine with the snap. Uh, but what is yeah. it about battle mode that that hooks you? And what is it about the battle mode that you think that if I were to play it more, I would come to appreciate? It's the it's it's skill it's the skill versus the strategy is what makes it so addicting because i don't play a, the, the last skill based strategy game i i played was overwatch um and i didn't really care for that game um i mean i i enjoyed it for what it is but this game you i don't really genuinely know what it is but i'll try to put it as best as i can the way it's designed is so interesting because like it, it's not it's unique it's super unique because you're you're sitting there and you're playing as these demons and, and you know they don't have nearly as much to them as like the slayer does but like it's the act of fighting okay so let me start with the slayer's front 
when you're playing as the Slayer and, and as someone like me who is who plays a game on Nightmare constantly and knows the demons front to back, right? Uh, the game gives you a lot of adrenaline, right? But you get to a point of the game where you start to really understand how these demons act and you can predict them and whatnot. But when you're playing as the Slayer and you're versing these demons, it's a whole different adrenaline ball game. Uh, because you're having to deal with these demon players who act very differently. And you really kind of have to actually sit there and think. Because I have had matches where I had to strategize. I had to literally think about what my next move was. And you don't get it from the campaign. You, you do get it from the campaign, but not to the extent of battle mode. Battle mode really, really puts you on that edge. It really makes you have to think because even in, in the campaign, uh, you 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 do have to think, but mostly you can just wipe everything out. You, it's it's a bunch of mindless killing. I mean, I don't like to call it that, but you can wipe everything out really quickly. But with battle mode, it's different because every game, it's like you're playing a campaign level, but it's different every time, and the outcome could be completely different. Um, and sometimes you'll have these demon players who are so smart and they outsmart you so well that it it really makes you go, shit, I'm dealing with something way, way more crazy. Um, and yeah, it, it, it is a lot like Evolve. I, I haven't played Evolve, but it, it definitely gives off that vibe. I think it's really the, the act of like, being pitted up against two demon players that are not being controlled by AI. These demon players are out to defeat you in such a way that you have to think outside of the box of the campaign. And that is where you get the most like satisfaction when you wipe them out because you have to think of a different way of play with the game. And it's so it's literally like the Slayer is based off of skill, but he also has strategy to him. You really have to think about what you're doing. And that's the same thing with the, the, the demons, because you're having to sit there and you have to think about which... Because it's literally a game of chess. When the demons spawn, you literally have to look where you're where you're facing. And if you want to place two shield guys over here, an Arachnotron over there, and a Cacko Demon over there. Because sometimes, maybe it's a good idea to place a Cacko Demon over here because you can predict where he's going. Because if you, as the demons, predicting is the is the game, and predicting is all about trying to understand how the slayer acts. Because every slayer is different. Every slayer acts different, even if they have the very same general like movement. Each slayer you're going to fight is different, and every time you do that, you're learning a new, different like it's like fighting. It's like you're fighting a boss, but every time you fight the boss. He mixes up his attacks. That's what it feels like for the demons. You have to, you literally have to be very smart and very calculated with what you do and what you place. Um, and if you're not like doing that, you're going to be wiped out. Because one, one of the real big issues that a lot of people have with battle mode is that you can't really play it casually. Because if you play it casually, you can't really talk to your teammate all that. Like if, if you just mute your mic and he does, and your teammate demon doesn't say anything. You cannot like strategize what to do. Like you can't tell your other your other buddy demon to say block his loot because if you block his loot, that's gonna that's gonna give us an advantage. You can't do that casually. You have to get a buddy or someone who you know you, you met during battle mode, and you have to be communicative. You have to tell the other person what to do at what moment because the slayer at any moment can wipe you out in a second. Um, and even when the Slayer is almost dead, you don't want to be too aggressive because if you're super aggressive, you could be wiped out and he could regain all of his health. It's it's a matter of risk and reward that gives it such an edge and such an addictive nature because it's a whole different experience of multiplayer that really kind of makes you on your seat. Because when I play traditional deathmatch, like, yeah, I'll get on, on the edge of my seat, but it's just... Like, it is literally just kill everyone until you get enough points. With battle mode, the matches will last until one of the teammates lose. I was, uh, I remember a buddy of mine said that he had a match last 30 minutes. 
um, because it was literally a go back and forth. You have to really put your mindset into the mode in order to really enjoy it because it is not a casual mode. Um, it is not. It is It is literally a mode that you have to put strategy and thought process into. You can't really just go into it and just get a couple kills and call it done. When you're going into a match of battle mode, you really have to... It, it's a chess game. It really is. It's, it is It is. It is a chess game, and it really, really puts you on edge. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, Crash, because, um, like I said, it's really difficult for me to kind of explain well, I think, I think why it's the, addictive. I think he gave the best pitch for battle mode that I, I'm ever going to get. So. <laughs> right? <Yeah>. Right? <laughs> 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 well, you had some um, thoughts, Justin, and you've been <laughs> you've been stirring them. <laughs> yes, it's, um, it's because I love this mode. I do. I I really love this fucking mode. It's really good. But like, as someone who as loves it as much as I do, you know, like it's uh, it's such a fucking great chess game. It's so good, but it's clever. It, they exactly. It's so unique. I've never played anything like it in my whole life, and I love it. But they need to fix it, man. They they need to they they need to really look what is truly a problem and fix it because if they don't it's going to be forgotten and i don't want that i don't want it to be forgotten i want it to stay you know but like uh, it's um, just it's one of those things but yeah that that is my genuine like as best as i could put it as to why i love it so much and, and why i care about it um pretty much so uh so justin Yes. I know this is what you want to share before you jump out, right? Uh-huh. Um, now, this is what I want to say to everyone here. Um, we can either see this thing to the end tonight, or we could do a part two to the club size review, as we are running on four hours, <laughs> twice as long as we yeah. predicted. I am for a part two. And not only that, well. not only that, but it gives a chance for um, Eight Live Studios to get in, and I'm sure Shades yeah. Master. So I'm thinking um, we'll do the the Lauren story and the extras next time. I might even add in a couple more um, a couple more sections. Um, okay. Because <laughs> um, I'll be honest, this went exactly as I was hoping. Clearly, you know having everyone play this game and and kind of brew their thoughts you know it really created this um uh this uh you know really meaty stream we've got going here um yeah now i know i don't want to be rude so you know i want to ask uh jr crash and uh perfect if they had any if they had thoughts on battle mode here or if they wanted to share them next time when we're all fresh so I my, think my I will... on battle mode. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> oh, I was just going to say, I will save my thoughts for battle mode for next time because I don't think I can really. Uh, <laughs> um, I stay there. All right. <laughs> I'm actually running on fumes right now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah I, I had no script I, talking I'll about that. Well. They're all good. <laughs> I'll just wrap up my thought on battle mode because it, there's really not. There's almost nothing for me to say about it. Uh, basically, I didn't really feel compelled to play very much of it. I played a couple of rounds. It, it just felt like, okay, demons versus a slayer, big deal. You know, this isn't really intriguing. I, I don't have the same kind of feeling as those, but I, I just don't, I just haven't played it enough to appreciate what it is. Mm. And I, I really appreciated him giving me his take on it because as somebody who just, if I don't get hooked by something immediately, I'm just not going to look further into it. I'm just going to move on. So... It's nice to hear someone's take who actually does enjoy it for what it yeah. is. See, for me, um, it was actually finding the right demon. Um, for me, I'm mostly an Archvile player, secondarily Marauder. I'm an Archvile Marauder player. Yeah, yeah. same. I like the Archvile because I like having a player that goes after the Slayer while I can sit behind and summon my minions, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah... yeah um, does anyone have any um, any final thoughts for episode part one of two? The longer this video uh, continues, the stronger the it will be. <laughs> the stronger it will become. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Well, I guess my final thoughts uh, would be on kind of just the stuff we covered so far. Combat mechanics, demons, 
gameplay, uh, sound. So I would say Doom Eternal is a unique flavor of a first-person shooter. It's basically like the pina colada of first-person shooters. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. But what's great is that it's unique and it's different. And it's something that's available for people. And what really uh, shines about it is that it has, honestly, some of the best, most fast-paced combat mechanics uh, mixed with a sort of three-dimensional aerial platforming thrown in. And there's so many mechanics. Uh, from grenades to your flamethrower to your chainsaw that all accomplish different and it's one of those it's one of these first person shooters where you 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 can't really just sort of casually enjoy it it's not turn your brain off and just shoot demons type of of a, of a doom you really have to engage in the combat and learn how all the mechanics work and really have your head in the game and be focused and it does play out a little bit like a like a high speed chess game with these other demons because they all have their own abilities and you have your abilities and and uh if you're looking for that experience this knocks it out of the park if you're just looking to turn your brain off and shoot things this game might be really frustrating so that's kind of my my opinion and i'll maybe i'll, I'll I'll, I'll save some of my other thoughts for part two, but ultimately that's what it is. It's a it's a high speed thrill ride um, with silky smooth animation, and it's uh, fantastic. So, uh, but I would say definitely if you haven't played it yet and you're thinking about buying it, do a little bit of research because there are elements of this game that you might really not enjoy if you're not prepared for it, right? such as the platforming. And just the the overwhelming amount of mechanics, the learning curve is a little bit steeper than most people might like. So just do a little bit of research. Uh, but for yes. me, it was a hell of a lot of fun and a good game. That's my, my final thought. All right. I'll uh, I'll give my final thoughts just really quick. Um, I won't go too crazy detail like battle mode, but I'll try to keep it as minimal as I can. Uh, fucking love this game. Ten out of ten. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I waited two years for this game, and I am very happy that it came out the way it did. And uh, I couldn't have asked for a better game, honestly. And I know that uh, I am going to be playing this game a lot, even though it doesn't have Snap Map, which is which sucks. But like I said, I've talked about that many times. Um, that doesn't really degrade my experience with it. I think this is one of the best things to happen to the fps genre in a while um even though it, it has split everyone a bit apart even though it has a lot of really interesting decisions that uh, a lot of people don't agree with but i think later down the line it's gonna be one of those games remembered by the community of doom to say this was a game to really really test us as players uh as someone Put four years, 2016 under my belt. This is the exact game that I have been wanting for so long. And I couldn't have been more happy that it even happened. The fact that Doom in general is back uh, and it's got a new sequel and there will probably be another sequel down the line. I couldn't be happier to be a Doom fan. And to me, it is a game to test the time. And it is going to be going down as one of the best games, in my honest opinion. I love it so much. And uh, that, is, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. But, yeah, good fucking game. Good fucking game. Even though it has its problems, but generally, good fucking game. All right, Perfectus. Anyway, uh, sorry to interrupt. I'm oh, probably yep. going to have to head out now. Yeah, that's but, fine, uh, man. Yeah. Okay, Peace well, out. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out, Juice. See you later, man. All right, then. Perfectus, my man. Uh, all right, well, I think I made the uh, biggest elaboration on this uh, towards the very beginning. But I will have to say that Doom 26, not Doom 26, sorry, Doom Eternal just provides so much of an adrenaline rush just as an experience. It prov it's just brutal. 
and violent and loud and colorful and that's everything I wanted. I think that I put this. I think that the wait was certainly worth it, and that id Software really just put everything they had into the game. Um, it really showed a lot of character when they prevented it from being released in November, when they thought it wasn't finished yet. All right. Okay. Were those your final thoughts? Perfectus? Oh, yes, yes, sorry. Oh, um, those were? Oh, yes, all right. Yes, that was it. All right. Um, and in a surprise twist of events, I'm not going to give my final thoughts um, because the journey's not over um, until we come out with the second episode of the part one of two at this point of uh, the Doom Eternal club size review where next time we are going to be exploring the uh, more narrative side of things, um, some bonus content, and maybe, perhaps, um, you might see one or two new sections in here. Um, hopefully, uh, 8 Live Studios is able to accompany us this time. Um, it's unfortunate that he wasn't here, but, you know, things come up here and there. Um, I want to thank um, JR Crash, uh, Profectus, uh, Shades Master, who um, I guess, um, I don't know what happened to him. I'm just going to assume it was another Terragrithius chamber situation, um, and he fell asleep. Um, and I, wa <laughs> I want to thank uh, Justin for showing up as well. Um, um, it's been so much fun doing this with you guys tonight, and I want to thank you for coming once again. Thanks for um, having me. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, no problem. All right. It was a lot of fun, and I think it was very productive. Oh, yeah. All right. This uh, this was Count Lazuli, and I'll see you in the next half of the Club Size Review. Hi, everyone. Good night, everyone. Peace out. Peace out.